And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and this is Drink with Rick episode number 104. And tonight we're going to drink an Italian wine. I think this is very fitting to close out season two with an Italian wine. So that's what we're going to do tonight. It could be a lot of fun. I've never tried it before. But we're going to try it tonight and see how it tastes. Also, we're going to toast some birthdays, some, uh, an anniversary for uh, some friends of mine. Uh, oh, wow. We've got uh, National Days and it's open chat night. It's open chat night. So get in the chat and and drive the show, because that's what it's all about. You know, Drink with Rick, this is a stream of consciousness kind of show. I do have some show notes, and I've got them right here. But I don't always follow them or obey them, because this show isn't about me. It's about the wine, somewhat. But it's really about you and me getting together on a Saturday night, just kicking back, relaxing with our favorite libations, or whatever we're doing. Just kicking back, relaxing, and having a great time together. That's what it's all about, just getting together and having a good time. You don't have to drink wine to watch this show. You don't have to drink wine to, to participate or, or to be interested in the show at all. You, look, you can drink whatever you want. You can drink beer. You can drink uh, soda. You can drink water. You can drink uh, or anything else you want to drink, you know, tequila or whatever else you have. If you just want to sit back and snack on something, that's fine, too. The thing is, as I said before, it's not real. It's, it's about the wine somewhat. The wine is sort of a catalyst for getting things together. But even if you don't drink wine or, or whatever, you can still enjoy the show because the, the show is really about us just having a great time. That's it. So uh, kick back, relax, enjoy the show, and please get in the chats uh, so we can all have a great time. You know, you can watch the show live on uh, Facebook on our Facebook page, at Drink with Rick. You can watch it live on YouTube. The YouTube channel is Drink with Rick. Also on Twitch, for all my friends on Twitch, it is Drink with Rick 1. Drink with Rick and the number 1. Drink with Rick 1. And on Twitter, you can catch it at Drink with Rick on Twitter. That's my Twitter handle, it's at Drink with Rick. Uh, we're doing that live uh, via Periscope. Uh, I don't know how for how much longer because I think there's some changes coming with Periscope. I don't know how that's going to shake out th this next month, but we're going to find out. And, of course, on the website. The website, the live website, it's at drinkwithrick.com. You can go there and watch it live there. Now, I don't have a chat going on the website, but if you click on the post for that live stream for tonight... Uh, there should be a comments page that pops up or comments box that pops up below and you can comment and I will respond in kind. Also, you can email me, rick at savoyamedia.com, rick at savoyamedia.com with all your questions, queries, uh, feedback, good or bad, indifferent, doesn't matter. Just uh, get with me, talk to me. If you have a wine you want me to review, uh, to send, and you want to send me a bottle of wine, uh, that's fine to review. And I, you know, if you're a vintner, if you're a winemaker, a wine grower, you want to send me a bottle of wine to review and, and evaluate, I will give it an honest, a fair and honest review. Uh, just send me the wine. Uh, just contact me at rick at savoymedia.com. There's also a contact page at, at Drink with Rick, and uh, you can do it from there. Also, the podcast. The podcast goes out Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern. So if you miss the show here or you can't watch the stream, you're commuting or doing whatever you, uh, you want to do or you're uh, doing multitasking with other things, and you, you want to listen but you don't, uh, you can't just commit your whole attention to watching, as many of us do, uh, we have the podcast. The podcast goes out Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, Monday nights at 10 p.m., and you can catch it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, your favorite Android device, Stitcher Radio, Blueberry.com, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Amazon Music, Podcast Index, and by email, if you click on the uh, by email button on the website, on the you, Go to drinkwithrick.com, click on the subscribe page, and you'll see the by email button. Just click by email and put in your email address, and you can get the latest episode of Drink With Rick as soon as it drops. Uh, you'll get right away. No salesman will call. Okay, we don't use the email addresses for that. Okay, so this is what we're going to drink tonight. I'll give you. I'll show you a little bit of that. This is called a Verbo. This is a an. Uh, I'm Yanko Del Voltur, and this is a wine from Italy. It's an Italian wine. Uh, 
Alianico del Vultur. That's uh, what it's uh, called. And uh, Cantina de Venusa, that's uh, the, uh, what's the, the wine there. So we're going to learn a little bit more about this wine in just a few moments. But before we do that, let's get to the chat. Let's check out the chat and see who's in the chat with us. A little quiet on Facebook, as it usually is at the very start of the show. People generally kind of wander in as the show progresses. On Oh, on Twitch, we have folks in Twitch. That Square Guy is in the chat on Twitch. That Square Guy, it is great to see you. Uh, and uh, let's see. He says, uh, how special I see behind the curtain. Yes, yes, you do. He says, hey, hey, and hey, hey, right back at you. That Square Guy is a good friend of mine from the land down under. He uh, and Darcy do these great videos. He does uh, Lego videos where he builds Lego. He does Lego builds, and uh, they play some uh, games. They do some gaming. Of course, you know, on Twitch, you, you got to play some games, right? Yeah. And uh, they do some cooking videos, some cooking videos, which are always excellent to watch, uh, a lot of fun to watch. So check out that Square Guy on Twitch. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And look, even if you're not into any of those things, if you're not into Legos or gaming, look, he's got a lot of things to be into. But if even if, he's not, if, even if you're not into any of those things, and who isn't into cooking at least, um, you can still watch. It's a lot of fun getting into his chats. He's a great guy. He's a lot of fun to chat with. And uh, it just it's it's a very, very entertaining stream. So to check it out. Check it out. And uh, Square Guy says it seems there is some information going around. Barnstar told me you were uh, taking this weekend off. No, actually, if you can catch him, let him know I'm here. <laughs> no, no, not this weekend. Not this weekend. Uh, this is the last show, and I'm glad you brought that up. This is the last show for this season. Now, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to take a couple of weekends off, a couple of weekends off, uh, and then we'll be back in March. But this is the last show of this season, of season two. I'm going to explain that a little bit more as we go along. It's like, okay, why is this the last show of the season? Why are you doing seasons? How did that start? Uh, why did that happen? I'm going to give you a little background on that as we, we go along and explain what, what we're doing uh, what, what's going on now, what I'm going to be doing here uh, the next couple of weeks. So you'll uh, so get a better idea because I'm going to come back in Season 3 with a lot of cool stuff. So so uh, uh, <laughs> so uh, bear with me. Uh, well, I'll get into that later on in the show, but thanks for, for letting me know about that square guy. He... <laughs> He says, you're, a, you're too kind, my friend. Well, not, really, no. I, I mean, he says, I, I'll see if I can get a hold of him. I doubt he would want to miss this. Well, please, definitely, if he's, if he's around, anyone else is around that uh, wants to watch. It's the show, once again, the show is about us. So the more of us there are, the merrier, right? Especially with the wine. Okay, so uh, let me check and see if anyone else is uh, on Facebook kicking in. And Ed's here. And Ed, my good friend Ed Anthony, he's here. And Ed says, Ed is here. <laughs> and I'm glad you're here, Ed. It's great to see you. And uh, yeah, well, we're, you know, we'll talk about a couple of things here later on uh, as we get into the show. But uh, let me get to the wine uh, be before it gets too late. <laughs> As my wife gives me the evil eye, don't take two hours tonight. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so once again, this is the wine that we're drinking. <clears throat> this is a Verbo, an Elianico del Vultur. It is a 2017, and it is an Italian, it's an Italian wine from Italy. Yes, uh, big surprise there, okay? Uh, as many of you know, uh, I, am, I have Italian heritage. I'll talk about that a little bit, too. I guess I'll talk about that tonight, too. I didn't really have a big agenda for tonight. But anyway, this is the front of the wine. I'm going to show you the back of the bottle, and I'm going to read a little bit of the label. It says, Verbo, and and, and now it says, it looks like it says Aglianico. Uh, that's not how it's pronounced, actually. It's Aglianico. <laughs> so I'm messing myself up, and I haven't had any wine yet. It's Aglianico del Vultur. It's, uh, and I'm not going to read all the Italian in here, but it's a 2017. It's imported by Grape Juice Group in Denver, Colorado. Now, there's a name that is easy to say. Um, <laughs> Grape Juice Group, Denver, Colorado. And uh, it has a quote from Shakespeare down below here. It says, Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say, I, and I will take thy verb. Yet at lovers' perjuries, they say, Love laughs. Okay. Actually, I think it says Job laughs. 
<laughs> William, Sh uh, William Shakespeare from Juliet. Yeah, I haven't had any yet. This is bottled by Cantina di Venosa in uh, Venosa, Italia. It has 14% uh, alcohol by volume, ABV, in the 750 milliliter bottle of wine. So this is going to be an interesting wine to taste. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to open it just a moment here, but let me show you one more thing we have. One more thing we have is, let me get a close-up of this. This is uh, the food that we're going to pair it with tonight. We have some barbecue, yes, so we went to a barbecue place again. Uh, we have the uh, beef brisket, barbecue brisket, and this barbecue beef sausage. That should go pretty well with this. I know, we'll see. We have also a beef uh, summer sausage here, or a beef sausage here. And we have three cheeses. Now we have the cheddar, and we have, this is a, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> this is, these are hush puppies you know, that came with the, the meal the other night. Uh, I'm, let's see, I've got the uh, cheddar. We have this cheddar. We have the Trader Joe's double cream gouda. And we have something new tonight. We have, um, oh boy, I think my wife's going to have to, to tell me what this is because she picked this up. It has Syrah in it. Yes, Syrah, the wine. It's, uh, I forgot what cheese it was. She told me, and I, I don't remember. She put it on the plate and says, hey, this is what this is. And, uh, well, she, she's uh, going to have to jump in here and tell me what this cheese is because I forgot, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, all I know is that it has Syrah in it. So we're going to try that. So that's the wine we're going to be drinking tonight. Let me check the chat one more time. Ed's in the chat, and let's see, anyone else uh, on YouTube? Not so much, but we have folks in Twitch. And uh, let's see, uh, Adrian, is that... Adrian FN says hello, and uh, Adrian, that's uh, great to see you. Thanks for being here. It says hello, Square, and everyone. Well, hello right back at you. Great to see you here. Please stick around. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. Once again, get in the chat. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me what you're drinking. Tell me what you'd like to be drinking. Tell me what you'd, you're not drinking. Tell me what you'd like to see me drinking, and if I can get a hold of a bottle of it, I'll see if I can drink it too, if I can afford it. <clears throat> Hopefully your tastes are not too expensive. Because uh, I have had I have had folks uh, recommend uh, bottles of wine that I, I I looked up later and found out they were like forty fifty dollars a bottle and I'm like oh uh, you know a little out of my budget for the wine stream I spent enough on this wine stream already uh, but having to spend fifty to hundred dollar bottles a <laughs> hundred dollars on a bottle of wine it's uh, way outside my budget okay so uh, the square guy says I may have made it cheeky post in my community so we may end up with some squares in here no problem no problem look i'm kind of square i'm kind of square myself and i'm part of this hey i'm part of the square community too so it makes me a square right so we're all squares here don't worry about it and everybody hey look there was a time when square was square right but uh look square is cool now this day and age square is cool so <laughs> and the queer guy says, you're such a square drink with Ricky. Well, I appreciate it. Proud of it. Proud of it. Okay, so let's get opening this bottle of wine. So I've got my trusty foil cutter here, and I'm going to open up the Verbo. I'll try not to get any on the microphone here, and uh, maybe do a little ASMR sounds here as it opens up. And then I have my trusty, now this came from my wife, my wife gave this to me as a gift over the holidays, this mechanical corkscrew, and it, so far it's been working very, very well, except for, well, there we go, got it, second time is a charm, there we are, very nice, I should have done a close-up on this, right, I could go, nah. I can't put it back in the bottle now, folks, <laughs> we'll just have to, we'll have to work through that. <laughs> Missed opportunities there. Okay, and I have my uh, trusty, let me move this out of the way for a minute. I have my trusty aerator from the Veneto Wine Lover set, which you can purchase uh, the entire set for $19.99 uh, through Amazon. See, I'm giving Bezos a free plug here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have a banner on my website. You click on the banner and you want to purchase the set, or just purchase it by itself for about $12.99 or so, I think is what it costs. Um, I might see a few cents from it, but probably not because I don't think Jeff Bezos is that, I don't know. 
I, 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 I dump on him a lot, don't I? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I have reasons, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> Look, he still lets me stream on, he lets me stream on Twitch, right? <laughs> so well, we'll cut him some slack tonight. Anyway, so I've got my aerator in. And, of course, to pour this grape, grape juice, the grape juice group, that, that, that's something else. I don't know. To pour, the, this is not grape juice, okay? Not even close. Okay, well, it was at one time, I'm sure. Yeah, it was at one time, and not anymore. Anyway, to pour this and aerate it, I'm going to, oh, I almost forgot to do this, didn't I? For my ASMR friends out there, this is my genuine crystal. Galway glass from uh, from Irish uh, Irish. I did that all backwards, didn't I? It's my genuine Irish. Let's take two. This is my genuine Irish crystal glass from Gal uh, by Galway <laughs> from Ireland, <laughs> given to me by my employers at uh, bytowayradios.com. I'm really messing this up tonight, folks, aren't I? I was hoping for the perfect stream tonight. <laughs> And the only perfect stream I think I got was just now. There we go. <laughs> perfect stream. Yeah. I could make jokes. I'm not going to right now. Okay, so let's let this open up. And while it's opening up, let us take uh, a look at the wine, get a closer... Well, 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 we'll do a little bit of research on the wine here. I did some, actually, already. So I'll tell you where I got it. I purchased this from Wine Store, winestore-online.com. Uh, here in Blakeney, uh, at least the Blakeney store here in North Carolina, in Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, this one was recommended to me by the folks at Wine Store. And they said, well, this is a new one. This is a nice wine. You like Italian reds? We know you like dry reds, Rick. And we're going to give you, well, they didn't give it to me. I bought it. <laughs> we're going to give you this, this tip. Get this bottle of wine. <laughs> and you'll like it. Uh... Uh, it's going downhill fast, isn't it? <laughs> I, this is an unscripted show, but it, it, it's it's unscripted and it's definitely uncorked. So uh, so I, I checked it out on their website, and uh, they have some information on their website about it, and it says that it can be tannic and even a bit rustic, and I'm reading this from their website at uh, winestore-online.com. Uh, and apparently, Del Vautour owns its own di uh, dock, and it's a wine with more than 2,000 years of history. So, and, and apparently, it's grown, the, the grapes are grown in the Venosa Hills, and uh, supposed to be uh, tannic, fruity, and uh, bright and fresh, apparently, from what they're saying. So, we're going to find out here in just a moment. I checked around on Wine Searcher. I only found one place where they had it. And it was $18.85 a bottle on Wine Searcher, winesearcher.com. And uh, Vivino has it on their website. They get a four point, they give it four out of five stars, four, uh, 4.0 ratings on here, uh, out of 1,862 ratings at this point. And this is for the 2017 vintage, which was which is the vintage we have here. They have it listed for $9.98 a bottle. And they say that this vintage rates better than any other year for this wine this year <laughs> i don't know anyway so um i will tell you what i paid for this bottle because i have the receipt right here and i paid i paid um oh wait a minute let me go with the wrong receipt here no it's uh it's right here verbo i paid 14.99 dollars 14 dollars and 99 cents yeah, that's not, can we do take three? Okay, fourteen dollars ninety nine cents for this bottle of a Verbo. There are no retakes on the live show, right? There are no retakes, no redos, not allowed. So it, what you, yeah, <laughs> that's that's how it works. Okay, so let's take a look at this wine. When, looking at this wine, it is full body, very full body, very dark complexion on this wine. The bouquet, very fruity, as they said. It is very fruity. And um, I'm getting a lot of dark fruit in here. A lot of dark fruit. I would say blackberries, a lot of blackberries, um, maybe some black cherry. A lot of blackberry. Maybe henna blueberry in there. Mostly blackberry. 
and it smells as a hen oaky. So uh, we'll give it a taste. Let's give it a taste right now. Okay, yes, it is quite, it is fairly tannic. Not, not, not super tannic, but there are some tannins in here. It's fairly tannic, and it's kind of a complex taste. It's kind of complex. It's, it's a very, it's a bold wine. This is a bold wine. This is not a wine that, uh, you know, if you don't like bold wines, let me give it a second taste because that first one, it, there was a lot in there, but I did taste the blackberry. But I tasted a lot of other things in here. Let me get a second taste here. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, black blackberry. Um, maybe a hint of chocolate in there. It's fairly oaky. And um, yeah, it's it's. Um, very tart, very tart. Uh, yeah, there are quite a bit of tannins in this wine, and uh, it, it has a it doesn't have a super long finish, and it's fairly dry. This is a fairly dry wine. Uh, interesting. Let me try one more. Yeah, I'm picking up mostly blackberries. It's, it's uh, a little leathery too yeah okay interesting wine interesting wine i'm going to have to let this open up a little bit more i don't think it's opened up enough uh I, i'm going to let it open up just a little bit more we're going to have a little bit more yeah a lot of tannins in this wine okay very bold yeah it's a very bold wine so we're going to let it open up just a little bit more it's not bad it's not bad I think it, uh, it just needs to open up a bit. Okay, so let's get back to the let's go back to the chats for just a moment. Let me need to check uh, Twitch. Tom Antio's in the chat. Great to see you, Tom Antio, and uh, and Barnstar. Barnstar, you made it. You Barnstar, you made it in the chat. It's great to see you. Uh, Barnstar says it's still got that new crystal glass ding. It it does. It does indeed. I try to take care of it, and and I sometimes have. Uh, been a little concerned about cracking it on the fence, but this is crystal, and it's a high-quality crystal. This is imported from uh, from Ireland, so it's it's uh, it's a very high-quality crystal. So it should be fine. Barnstar says, "Ah, today is the season's finale. I get it now. <laughs> yes, today is the season finale, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this because we there are going to be some. I'm going to tell you all about it in a little bit." Okay, my wife Chi is in the chat, and she says, uh, it says creamy, to creamy Toscano with Syrah. That's what it is. This this uh, cheese is a Toscano with Syrah. I knew it was something like that. I knew it was a, something Italian. Um, Toscano with Syrah. Let's go ahead and try pairing with this some, with some food to get the uh, get things rolling, because I think I need a little bit of food to go with this wine. Uh, you know, according to Wine Story, it says this is good for a date night. Um, I don't know that this is a wine that I would drink by itself because of the the strong tannin and and uh, and how bold this wine is. Some people really like bold wines; it's fine. Um, I like them kind of medium. It kind of depends on my mood too, but uh, and it also depends on what I'm pairing it with. But uh, this is a very bold wine. I don't know right offhand if I really would. If I really would uh, have this by itself, per se, so we'll see. I think it really needs some food. Let's try it with. Let's try it with the. This is what is this? This is the beef. This is the uh, beef brisket. Mm. Try it with the beef brisket. Oh wow! Yeah, this is a bowl of wine. Okay, beef brisket. Here we go. And the brisket is very good, by the way. It's a couple of days old, but it's good. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. It actually, goes all right with the barbecue. Not bad with the barbecue. I can I can drink this with the barbecue. It's not bad. Let me um, let me clear the pot a little bit. 
clear the palate a little bit. And let's try it with the beef smoked sausage. Now this, this because it's tan, very tannic. Now, Elianico, I don't know normally, I mean, it should go fine with some sausages. The smoked sausage, I don't know, but because of the high tannins in here, it should work. does bring out the smoky flavor of the sausage i'll say that definitely brings out the smoky flavor of the sausage i like that okay not bad not bad let's try it with the beef summer sausage i'll clear the palate one more time try it with the beef summer sausage and uh now if it worked with the smoked sausage this is kind of smoked too so it should be pretty much close to the same thing not variation of the same same basic thing. Hmm. Yeah. Although this is a little bit more acidic, I think. But then I think the wine is too. Uh, not my favorite pairing. I think I liked it better with the the smoked sausage, the the uh, barbecue sausage. I think I liked it better than that. Let me clear the palate on that again. That one's not my favorite pairing. Yeah. All right, tell you what, let's try it with the cheddar. Cheddar should be okay with this. Just guessing. We'll find out. Cheddar should be okay. I got to pour some more wine. Why not? Okay. And uh, cheddar's okay. Cheddar's good, actually. Mm. Um, yeah, cheddar's good. Cheddar's good. I like that. Actually, I think the cheddar helps the wine a bit. I, I, it, do, it does. And we've seen this happen a few times. I think the cheddar really does help the wine. Uh, it does. Clear the palate one more time. Let's try it. Okay, this is the Toscano. Toscano with Syrah. Toscano cheese with Syrah. This is going to be a new experience. I guess I should pour some more wine for this, shouldn't I? Toscano with Syrah. Hmm. Oh, that's a nice cheese. Hint of, hint of wine to it. May I go okay? Hmm. Okay. That works pretty well with this wine. The Toscano with Syrah. Now, the Toscano is actually pretty good cheese, but it actually works fairly well with this wine. I, that, that's a real, that's a good pairing. I like that. Okay, now let's try it with the uh, the drum roll here. Let's try it with the Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda because we've never had a miss on that. Not yet. Clear the palate just a little bit more. Let's try it with a Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda. Hmm. And it's good. It is Gouda. I really, I really pounded that one into the ground, haven't I? That joke. Okay. I'm not known for my good puns. Very good. The Gouda is good. It works okay with the wine, but what it does do is because of the, uh, the high alcohol content in this wine, I can almost I can taste the alcohol. With the cheese, it really kind of brings out the alcohol taste in the wine a little bit more. Um, and I think that's that's all. I think that's all the wine doing that. Um, the cheese, the cheese is good, and I think it's a fairly good pairing with the with the wine. I think it wins. I think it wins. We'll, we'll say it. we'll give it a win here on that one. Uh, let me clear the palate one more time. Okay. I think that'll do it for the pairings for now. Uh, I'll pour a little bit more of this wine. And let's get back to the chat because uh, I know there's some action going on in the chat. 
let's see what we got here. Uh, anything going on on YouTube? Facebook is kind of quiet. Nothing going on YouTube. Twitch, all the activity is there. Beast on Gaming is in the chat. It's great to see you, Beast on Gaming. Glad you're here. And he says hi. And uh, let's see, Red G Man's here. Wow, you know, it's, uh, I've been watching since so I've seen you in the chats. Uh, Red G Man, it's great to see you. It says, hi, Rick. Greetings from the great Southland. Oh, Southland. How do you say? Southland? Southland. Southland. <laughs> However, you said it's greetings. It's great to see you. It's great to see you, Red Jeepman. And uh, let's see uh, who else we have here. I think that's what we got here going. Right? Yeah. There we go. Well, thank you, thank you, all of you for being here. Please stick around. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. All right. So uh, let's see. Oh yes, birthdays. We got to get to the birthdays here because I want to get to some other things here. We paired it with the food. Birthdays, and, and I have an anniversary to toast. It's going to be pretty cool. And, uh, of course, the national days. Let's uh, let's do the birthdays. So we need to cue the fireworks. Cue the fireworks, please. There we go. And uh, let's see. The first birthday we have up here. I want to give a, another birthday shout-out. I did, I did toast him last week, but I want to give another shout-out to my good friend Norbert because his birthday was so close to the cusp there in between weeks. It was this past Thursday, the 25th, so I, I toasted him last week a little ahead of time. Now I'm going to toast a bladed birthday toast to him. Here's my good friend Norbert, Norbert Davis. Happy birthday. And I also want to give another toast to my friend Matt, Matt, Matt Snyder, who is a, the co-founder and um, co-owner of Wine Store. The wine, this, yes, that wine store, the same wine store that I bought this wine from. And... Uh, Matt, uh, he, uh, his birthday was also on Thursday. I gave him a shout-out, too, last week, but we're going to toast him again just in case he shows up here tonight. Matt, happy, happy birthday to you. And may you have many, many, many more. Here's to my good friend Matt Snyder. Now, I have some new birthdays here. New birthdays. <laughs> as opposed to old birthdays. Um, I have uh, my, my friend Kate. Her birthday is coming up this coming Tuesday, the 2nd. This is March. Can you believe it's March already? Goodness. March 2nd. And uh, that is uh, this coming Tuesday, I believe. Anyway, uh, Kate, I used to work for Kate. She was my boss at WOFL at one time. She was the program director at, uh, uh, at W... No, program. What am I saying? I'm sorry. Yeah, she was. She was program and promotions director over there at uh, WOFL at one point. Uh, after my good friend uh, Chris Wolf, um, was it before or after Chris? I don't remember now. It's all kind of no. It was it was before I think. And it's all a blur now. <laughs> it's all a blur. Anyway, to my good friend Kate, Kate, here's to you. Happy happy birthday, and may you have many 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 more. Yeah, it's all a blur, and I haven't had that much wine left yet. Uh, also, it looks like things have hung up for me on Facebook. Can you believe that? You guys still seeing everything on Facebook? It does that all the time. I don't know what the deal is with the... I think it's just my feed on Facebook. I think that's what it is. It's just my... I think because I'm still getting it live here, right? Am I getting it right live here? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Unless it really has cut off. Nope. It looks like I'm still talking. Right? Anyway, so that's just my feed here on Facebook that's doing that. It's hanging up. You guys can see me everywhere else, right? Looks like I'm still... Let me switch over to the audio on Twitch. That might help. <laughs> there we go. Now I can hear myself. All right. Uh, where were we? Oh, yes. Uh, we did toast Kate. I'm going to toast you again, Kate. Just because I can. This is from my good friend, Kate McSweeney. Kate McSweeney. Uh, who was my boss at one time over at WOFL, Channel 35 in Orlando, Florida. It's you, Kate. Happy, happy birthday to you, Kate. And another Do WOFL alumni, another friend of mine who uh, I go way back with. Uh, this is for my good friend, Kathy. Kathy, your birthday is also, well, this is coming, it's coming up Wednesday. This coming Wednesday, the 3rd. So Kathy's birthday is coming up on Wednesday the 3rd. You, uh, Kathy worked in the county department at WFL, so uh, she was important because that county department, that's who paid us. <laughs> that's, that's who did our paychecks, did the payroll. So, Kathy, here's to you. Much appreciated all those years doing the payroll. <laughs> Make sure I got paid every, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, at, at, at that work. Thank you very much, by the way. Kathy, here's to you. Happy, happy birthday, and may you have many, many, many more. And I'm going to toast you again because I can. My good friend Kathy. There's one more birthday. Not really time. It's not really coming up too quick. Um, it's going to be next Saturday, but because we're going to not going to be doing a show next Saturday, and I'll explain that a little bit, um, her birthday is coming up this uh, next Saturday, and that is on the 6th, March 6th, and I wanted to give a quick shout out and a birthday, special birthday toast to my niece, Jenny, Jenny Pearl Balabalos. This is from my niece, Jenny. Jen, happy, happy birthday coming up, and may you have many, many, many more. And a second toast to you, because you're my niece. For Jenny, Jenny Pearl Bellavalos. Okay, we have one more thing. We have an anniversary. I want to get to this anniversary real quick, because this is for another WFL alumni. Yeah, I have a lot of friends at WFL. We were more like family there. But um, this is from a good friend, Pete, and his wife, Janet. Pete and Janet celebrated their wedding anniversary this past Thursday, on the 25th, Pete and Janet have been married for 26 years. And I want to say to Pete and Janet, Ramondetta, Pete and Janet, happy, happy anniversary. And may you have many, many, many more. May you have continual, uh, continuous years, many years of continual marital bliss. Marital bliss. <laughs> Uh, it's got to be a short show tonight, folks. you got to get some sleep. <laughs> many, many years. And may you have many, many more years of marital bliss. Here's to you, Pete and Janet Ramadetta. And I'm going to toast you again. Because I can. Happy anniversary. And, you know, Pete, um, he uh, worked in engineering. On air live on air switcher a lot. He did a lot of he, he wore a few hats. A lot of we all wore a different hat a lot of different hats there working at WFL. We kind of worked where we needed to work, wherever we needed us at the moment. Uh, a lot of the times, and uh, Pete um, he did a lot of the live on air switcher. He was responsible for making sure that everything got up and on the air and switched back and forth in real time. Uh, it, it's a big job. I've done it. I, I've, I, I did a little bit of it. They trained me to do it to cover for, for these guys late night um, uh, in the early days of w, WOFL. And uh, it's, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of timing. You have to know the board. You have to know where all the buttons are and to hit them all correctly. You know, I've had a... a I don't even know if I should go into this. Yeah, it's another story. Let me uh, cut the... Let me, let me cut the fireworks because that does it for the birthdays and the anniversaries this week. By the way, we're, we're drinking this. The Verbo Elianico del Voltura. This is an Italian wine from Italy, 2017. And uh, it's, uh, so far, it's a it's very interesting wine. I, I haven't made up my mind about it yet. I really haven't. I'll give you a final review at the end of the show. But I, to be honest, I have not made up my mind yet about this wine. Some things I like about it, some things I'm not crazy about. We'll see. We'll see how it works. Um, but uh, that'll be at the end of the show. So in the meantime, uh, I was going to mention, okay, I got a little story. Uh, not well, not so much a little story, but a dream I had. Uh, it's a reoccurring dream every once in a while, kind of a nightmare. And um, it goes back to, to my days when I worked at WFL overnights. We, I, I would do an overnight shift for a while, and they trained me to work the um, the switchboard in master control the live switcher lots of buttons lots of you know big panel lots of buttons a lot of monitors and uh, switching back and forth between the the show and the commercial and, and, and whatever else was going on right there's a lot of quick split second timing going on there you had to pay attention you had to know you had to think a little bit ahead you had to think a few seconds ahead especially in those days we had uh, two inch, uh, quad tape machines and some one-inch tape machines, and the the quad tape machine and, and a film chain. We had we had uh, a lot of the shows back then weren't on you know the tape or digital or whatever. A lot of the shows back in those days were on what we called a film chain. I mean a 16 millimeter projector. It was on 16 millimeter film, a 16 millimeter projector that shot um, you know shot the image into a a pickup 
a prism to pick up that would uh, that was basically a camera lens, you know, live video camera lens that would translate the picture in, uh, into electrical signals and send it out over the air. The thing is about some of those things, uh, particularly the quad machine and the, the tape machine and the uh, uh, film projector the, or the film chain, was that uh, there was some spin, I, I want to say some uh, spin up time between the time that it got up to speed to actually to actually be put on the air. So there was between uh, a two to three second delay between um, when it would when when the film chain started up or the the quad machine would start up the the heads would spin up and the time that that you could actually get the image so you could throw it on the air and because of that you had to think two or three seconds ahead where you had to when you're switching you're hitting the buttons you had to be able to uh, hit the button like you're the commercial's ending and you're about two seconds away from the commercial ending and you want to be spot on and go right back to the movie or the TV show or, or a next commercial, whatever it was, and you had to split second time and you had to think a couple of seconds ahead and hit that button uh, like you had to wait a couple of seconds and hit that button, you know, but, and, and you, you had to hit the machine a couple of seconds earlier, things like that. There's a little bit of things, there was a lot to coordinate. And um, I would have this reoccurring nightmare <laughs> Now I never really had an issue with it. I mean, you know, they trained us. To, they trained us to do this, but I would have this reoccurring nightmare where I'm at the switchboard. I'm at the switcher, the on-air switcher, by myself, and it's like three in the morning, and nobody else is around, and I'm on. I'm the one running this thing, and all of a sudden things are not working right. Things are not. The, 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 the film chain's not starting up right. We're coming co close to the commercial. We're about three seconds away, and I'm looking at the board, and it's like, which button do I push? Oh, no, I don't know which button to go to, and I don't know if I'm supposed to go to this other commercial or if I'm supposed to go to the film chain or if I'm going to go uh, some, uh, to, to this tape machine. I don't know which button to push, and I'm, putting, I'm pushing the wrong buttons, and weird things are coming up. And then I wake up in a cold, cold sweat thinking that, oh, man, I'm going to lose my job. It was awful. And then I look around the room and I realize it was just dreaming. <laughs> yeah, I talk about nightmares. And I realize, wait a minute, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago, but I still get those reoccurring nightmares every once in a while. I don't know why. I guess it's just some sort of anxiety thing with me. I don't know. But it's just a weird thing I get every once in a while. So, uh, yeah, that's just something. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that, to be honest. So uh, let's see. Let, let me go back to the chat here for just a moment. Uh, from okay, Red Jeep Man says, "From Italy, uh, you say that doesn't that does sound a bit Italiany." Yeah, very. And uh, he says, "Still February here." Yeah, it's still February uh, here too. But uh, we're not. Yeah, you're the ones of the future. Wait, wait. Uh, it's still February there, right? For a few more hours, and then it's going to be March. I think you're, you're, you, I mean, you're ahead, but you're not a whole day ahead, right? 12 hours ahead, 14 hours ahead, well, maybe it is a day. I don't know. What is that? Um, Barnstar says, you had me worried for a second there, right, saying it was March already. Thought I was stuck in another one of those dang wormholes. They're just as prominent as rain puddles these days. They seem to be, don't they? They seem to be. I was watching a... Uh, I was watching what was it a a uh, documentary about uh, 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 yeah I, I don't even want to go there now but it, it was a documentary about some event that happened in 1908 and one of the theories was it was caused by a little mini wormhole that shows up and was, you know a lot of people came up with all these different theories of what caused it but uh, it, it was it was interesting but I, I'm not buying that theory at all I really not. Uh, the, <sighs> Let's see what else we got here. Score guy says the time zones are weird. I say we get rid of them. Bloody useless. And Red G Man says the Chinese abolish them. <laughs> and Score guy says good. Red G Man says time zones are probably capitalist plot. And uh, Tom Antio says happy birthday, Jenny. I'm just trying to catch up on all this. Barnstar says congrats to the silver anniversary couple. Boy, am I that far behind in the chat? <laughs> Okay, Barnstar says you're 18 hours behind Melbourne. I'm 20 hours. It sucks. It will be March, uh, and the Red G Man says it will be March in nine hours and 10 minutes. 
Uh, so, so interesting. And Spicy Mugs in the chat. Great to see you, Spicy Mugs. Uh, I'm glad to see you here. Please stick around. But Spicy Mugs says, hey, Rick, what do you do for a living? Um, well, it, it's, uh, well, I can tell you that I sell radios. I sell two-way radios now. I've done a lot of things. Now, you're asking me what I do for a living now. I've done a lot of different things, worn a lot of different hats, had a lot of different jobs. We've talked about them a lot. But what I do now, what I've been doing for the last 10 years is, is selling two-way radios. And uh, I'm basically a, a pretty much the marketing guy and, and, and uh, the product, I'm the product manager for buy2wayradios.com. But I do a lot of different things, uh, podcasts and videos and write all the product descriptions for the products, put all the products up and do we check out the products, see, uh, see about procuring some for the, for the site and uh, uh, written product manuals for, for some of the products. I've done, I, do a, I do a lot of different things for the company, pretty much. <laughs> but, uh, long story short, <laughs> I do a lot. I wear, once again, I work at a job where I wear a lot of different hats. So... Uh, and Marcia says, now wait, you're 14 hours behind and I'm 16 hours. You know, when you start trying to figure out the, uh, the, the whole uh, day-night thing, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it kind of makes my head hurt sometimes, doesn't it? Uh, Spicy Mug says, wow, that's really cool. And it actually is. This is actually my dream job. Not, I don't want to get too far into it, but it actually is my, my dream job. And uh, I'm, I'm living the dream right now. I'm living the dream doing that. And uh, I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a great time. So let's check back in with uh, Facebook. Can you guys see and hear me on Facebook? I don't know what's going on there. I, I'm, I'm lo I lost my feed on Facebook. It looks like, it looks like I'm live still. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Let's see what's going on on YouTube. Not much on YouTube. All right. Once again, this is this is an open chat, so chat with me, and we'll uh, we'll set the we'll set the pace for the rest of the show. But uh, I do want to cover the national days real quick while we're here. And before before Ed uh, reminds me again, because Ed is like he's he's my right hand man on this. Uh, he he reminds me about all the stuff that I forget to talk about. <laughs> I'm glad he's here. I'm glad you're here, Ed. Uh, let's see, where was I? Oh, yes, the national days. Here we go. I got them up here, more or less. National days. All right, we're going to toast the national days here. Everybody ready? Do I need the fireworks for this? Do I need, do I need something else for that? Let, let's see if I've got something else uh, for the national days. I don't know if... Uh, by the way, once again, we're uh, we're drinking this. By the way, this Verbo wine, and uh, and I'm I'm still not I'm still not decided on on what I think of it yet. But uh, let's see, where is my where are my videos, my backdrops and stuff? I can't find this stuff now. All right. Anyway, the I've got so much stuff in here. I'm going to cover that in a minute. In a few minutes. I've got so much stuff on this, on this, <sighs> I lost my, I lost where my videos are, uh, here we are, here we are, <laughs> all right, let me pick something else out that'll work besides the fireworks that we can, that we can go with, okay, there we go, how about that, for the national days, I guess it's, a, it's okay for the national days, right, we'll try a few things, anyway, for the national days, um, did I lose? audio i mean did i lose video oh, i lost video okay let me go back let me cut that out i guess that didn't work i didn't work okay that was too much that was too much so uh it's cutting out the stream a little bit that they cut off the stream all right so i'm back to the camera did you guys lose the you guys lose the stream i lost the stream on, uh, I lost the stream everywhere, didn't I? Uh oh. All right. Well, let me fix that. There we go. Are we back? Are we back? Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. This is uh, that's what I get for trying to do something fancy on this old computer. We're going to be able to do this next week, folks. <laughs> no, that didn't work. All right. Can you guys see me okay now? <laughs> yeah, I really I really messed up the stream with that, didn't I? All right. So we're not going to do that again. 
try to get fancy. I'm not going to do that again. Okay, let me get back over here and see if I got uh, anything else back. YouTube, Facebook. Facebook is back. Um, I don't know what happened to Twitch. Can you guys see me okay on Twitch? There we go. I think. Slowly seems to be recovering. Yes, it's taking a while to recovering. Okay, we're back now. Good. Good. I don't know. I'll tell you what happened because I'm working on this really, really old computer. And that's going to change. That's one of the changes I'm going to be making. I think I need a little more wine here. For all of you listening uh, on the podcast later, for all of you listening, I'm going to leave all this in. I'm not going to edit any of this out. Why not? A little drama there. A little drama that you can't see, but it's probably just as well because, uh, trust me, you didn't miss anything. You didn't. You missed nothing, really, essentially, because that's what we got for, for the stream, for the video for a while, was nothing. <laughs> so, so you didn't miss anything. Uh, all right, so anyway, where were we? Um... Barnstar says, I, uh, Square Guy says, oh, is this season break when you're building your new PC? Actually, um, I'll let you know in just a minute. Let's, let's get, let's do the, um, let's do the national days. I'm not going to do any fancy background stuff because apparently, obviously, I can't anymore. So, um, let's go right to the national days. February 27th, which is today for another hour and two minutes or hour and one minute and how many seconds is left. Uh, it's, uh, uh, an, um, how do you pronounce this? Anosmia, anosmia awareness day, anosmia. I think it's pronounced anosmia, not anosmia. Anosmia awareness day. Anybody know what anosmia awareness day is? I will tell you because I looked it up. Uh, anosmia awareness day is, uh, being aware of anosmia. What anosmia is, it is a condition where you lose your sense of smell. Now, we know that that's one of the symptoms of COVID-19, but it can happen for a lot of other different reasons. Like you can lose your sense of smell if you have a common cold or if you have a flu or if you have a, um, certain other uh, traumatic things that happen with your nose. Like if you are around some kind of caustic uh, chemicals and they kind of mess with your, with your, your nose, you inhale some of that stuff. Or you, you have uh, certain traumas. Sometimes a head trauma can do it. Or a trauma to the nose, you know, a bloody nose, or you know, you, you get a broken nose, or something like that. Sometimes that can happen. It can also be a, a, a symptom of some other conditions. Some other conditions. Um, I think that some cancer patients experience that too when they're going through chemo. So, anosmia awareness day is something to be aware of. I tell you what, I really appreciate my sense of smell. I appreciate it a lot now. And with this wine, maybe I would appreciate it better if it was the one we had last week. But I will reserve my judgment for, for the end of the show, <laughs> for this one. A Nose Me Awareness Day. It's also National Kahlua Day. Who doesn't like Kahlua? Who of drinking age does not like Kahlua? Some people don't. It's, uh, Kahlua is good. I like Kahlua. National Kahlua Day. I'll drink to that. Uh, National Retro Day. It's also National Retro Day. You're going retro. Some people like go retro. Sometimes I go retro. My kids think I'm always retro because I'm such an old guy. Uh, you know, he, he's an old, old dude. Okay, boomer. Here's National Retro Day. National Strawberry Day. Oh, I love strawberries. My daughter. Tia, CM Cinder, is she in the chat right now? CM Cinder, uh, she loves strawberries. We used to call her when she was little. We used to call her a strawberry girl. I got a quick, I have a picture too, but I don't have it up here to show you. We used to go, hey, there's a story behind that. <laughs> I got a story for you. Uh, big surprise, huh? Okay, so when my kids were, were, were really little, we lived, and we lived in Oviedo. We lived in Oviedo, Florida. If you don't know where that is, that's not too far away. It's be kind of between Orlando and it's in Seminole County, between Orlando and, uh, and between uh, the, the Cape, pretty much. Uh, pretty much on the way to, to, uh, to Cape uh, Kennedy or the, or the Space Center, Kennedy Space Center. And uh, we lived in Oviedo and uh, 
where was going with this? Oh, yeah, strawberries. <laughs> and there was a lot of farmland back, back in that day. They had farms and things like that. And they had a place where they grew strawberries, and you could go pick strawberries. We call it the strawberry patch, and I think that's what they called it, the strawberry patch. But every year around strawberry season, as a matter of fact, it was around this time of the year, I believe, because in Florida, we could grow strawberries pretty much any time of year. I mean, it's, it's not like it was like here in North Carolina or whatever. Um, sunshine State, right? Um, anyway, so in, uh, uh, I think around uh, February or so, that's when they'd open up the, the strawberry patch. And you could go down there and you paid, you know, $5 or $10, whatever you, you paid is a, a flat amount of money for, for uh, a bushel or a basket or whatever you wanted to collect strawberries. And you go out and you pick your own strawberries. Go out in the strawberry patch and pick your own strawberries. Now, my kids would eat quite a bit of this, eat quite a few strawberries as they were picking them and putting them in the basket, as kids do. And it was quite, but these were huge. I mean, these were not little bitty strawberries, you know, like a lot of strawberries you see in the supermarket. Uh, not the ones that are non GMO, the ones they haven't pumped up, you know to make them look good. Uh, and then you open them up, there's nothing inside. But I'm talking about real strawberries, real organically grown strawberries. And these things were huge. I mean, really huge strawberries. And we had some local bakeries. We had a local bakery that used to, uh, uh, that used to be right next to my computer store, when I had my computer store in, in uh, Altamont Springs. Uh, that that's where they got their strawberries from for their cakes and their decorations and stuff like that because they had huge strawberries there. And they would go down there and buy these strawberries and put them on their cakes and their desserts and stuff. Really, really cool. Really great bakery, by the way. Um, anyway, so we'd go down there every year and we'd pay our five bucks or ten bucks for how many strawberries, how many bushels or whatever strawberries we wanted. So we'd go down there and we'd pick strawberries all day. Now, we would come home with these big straw, you know, big I don't know what they were, cardboard boxes full of pints of strawberries. And uh, we'd get home and we'd wash some strawberries off. And uh, my daughter, Tia, she loves strawberries so much. She could eat, you know what a pint of strawberries is? A pint. I mean, a pint of strawberries is about this big and it's full of these strawberries, right? This is, this is this, about this big, a pint. She would set a pint in front of her at the table and she would eat the entire pint. Now, we're talking about... Um, a five or six year old kid, okay, about about five years old, I think. Well, she's about five, and she would eat a whole pint of strawberries by herself in one sitting, just you know, just eating these things. There'd be nothing left of the strawberries, and uh, of course, she had strawberry all over herself too. But uh, it was it was fun to watch. It was the cutest thing. But I could not believe how she could pack away. So many strawberries in one sitting, and just uh, we, sometimes my wife and I would, and sometimes Tommy, you know, he, was, he would just look at her like, "Wow, <laughs> she's just a strawberry eating machine." Um, pretty amazing to watch, but uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. And um, uh, strawberries—that's what I remember about strawberries. But she still loves strawberries to this day. She's still our strawberry girl uh, to this day. Um, yeah, strawberries are good for you. They're good for you. Anyway, National Strawberry Day. Boy, I did not go off on a tangent there. And some of the wines have a strawberry taste. This one, not so much. This one's really more blackberry. Uh, February 27th is also National Polar Bear Day. Polar Bear Day. National Polar Bear Day. Um... I don't really have a I don't sorry. I don't really have a story about polar bears to be honest. I haven't interacted with them too much. I've seen them in the zoos, seen them on TV. As a matter of fact, I saw a polar bear on TV last night. It was on a TV show. I was I was what my wife and I were watching an episode of Mission Impossible and there was a scene where the character Barney, he was the electronics expert, uh, he he was uh, uh, doing some undercover stuff in at a zoo and um, he had a fight with the uh, antagonist. The, the, the guy attacked him, and he had a fight with him. And uh, the antagonist went over the the the, the railing there and uh, got eaten by a polar bear. The polar bear dragged him off. Um, so I, I yeah, that's the last time I've that's the latest I've seen of a polar bear on a TV show. Okay, so anyway, I, yeah, I went way off the rails on that, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> 
Barnstar says, uh, can't wait for those delicious summer fruits here in the Northern Hemisphere. What kind of stru- uh, fruits do you get? Red G-Man says, strawberry season here now, all berries, actually. Yeah, um, and and that's, um, okay, the score guy says, uh, relatable, I have no taste, but that's not a medical thing. And Red G-Man says, I know a young man who has no sense of smell, and he never had one. That's got to be really... That's got to be dangerous, too, you know, because if you don't have a sense of smell, how do you know if there's, like, say, for instance, somebody left the gas on somewhere or, uh, you know, if there's a fire somewhere or whatever. You, you don't know. You can't smell the danger. Uh, so that, yeah, that is uh, that is definitely a handicap there. That's definitely a disability. Uh, Barnstar says, I'm trying to catch up on this chat here because I went up talking, didn't I? Barnstar says, I just have to feed my billy goat during the day to know my sense of smell is going strong <laughs> because one will whiff of them and you'll go running in the opposite direction. <laughs> I've been there. Actually, I've been there, done that. So I know exactly where you're coming from. Been there. We had goats. I, I think I talked about it in the last episode last week. Yes, uh, been there, done that. Yeah, I know what a billy goat smells like. It's not fun. I do not like uh, the smell of, of goats. I don't like the smell of goat's milk. I, I, to me, that goat's milk is nasty. It just smells nasty to me. It tastes nasty. I, 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 can't, I, I can't really eat goat meat for the same reason. It's just that there's something nasty. Goat's milk, though. Goat cheese. There's just something about goat milk uh, that's just super nasty. Uh, let me catch up here with the uh, chat a little bit. Can't wait. Oh, okay, I read that. Uh, Barnstar says, I grew up where there were wild blackberry and raspberry bushes all over the place. When I worked, uh, you know, well, where we used to have our old office in Rock Hill, where I work now, I work for by Tuberias, our, our old office when I first started there, they had some blackberries that were growing wild right next to the building. And I'd go out uh, on, a, on a daily walk during my lunch hour, I'd go out there and I'd pick some of the blackberries, I'd pick some blackberries, bring them in, wash them, and, and eat them. They were really good. Uh, I love blackberries. Um, Let's see, Barnstar says, public sleeping day for the 28th. Yeah, we're going to get there. Uh, we're almost there, actually. Um, and Barnstar says, I love cherries, blackberries, peaches, etc. I love the cherries. Cherries are some of my favorite fruits. And uh, Barnstar says, same here. I don't like goat products. I, I'm with you right there, my friend. I'm with you right there. Uh, let's see, Ed, let me catch up on the chat in the end, because all of a sudden... The chat stopped, and now it's scrolling again. Ed says, fine here, but you're not reading me. Maybe I'm just chatting with Chi. No, uh, yeah, uh, Ed, the, um, the, the chat froze on me. The chat froze on me, too. Uh, Chi says Facebook is cutting him out. Yeah, uh, and, uh, Chi says no smell. Yeah, sorry about that, Ed. Uh, sometimes the chat freezes on me a little bit with the, uh, with the feed on Facebook. So uh, I apologize for that. Apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, I've got you now. I think I, I think I'm caught up with uh, with what you're seeing in the chat now. Let's see if there's anything going on on YouTube. Uh, no, nothing going on YouTube. That's fine. Okay, so oh yes, the rest of the national days. Okay, national days. Uh, we've got uh, National Polar Bear Day. I didn't mention that. February 28th. That's tomorrow. February 28th is National Chocolate Souffle Day. I love chocolate souffle. Um, National Chocolate Souffle Day. It's also National Floral Design Day. I like flowers. It's a national... Okay, and this is what Barnstar was talking about. National Public... Not speaking. I almost messed that up, didn't I? National Public Sleeping Day. Yes, National Public Sleeping Day. Have uh, So, uh, Barnstar, is there a particular reason why you want to mention public sleeping? Uh, you, you, uh, <laughs> public Sleeping Day for the 28th, yes. Um I've slept in public before. Like usually, if I'm, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll get another story. I'm gonna tank up for this one. Okay. Uh, if I'm in the doctor's office and I'm waiting, and you know, you're waiting there for like an hour to be seen by the doctor in the waiting room, or you're in the ER or something, you're waiting for some, you know, to be seen in the ER for like two, three hours. Yeah, that's. I'll go to sleep. I'll take a nap right there in the chair. Uh, I mean, what else is there to do, right? Um, so, uh, aside, besides wandering around and looking at the vending machines. So, uh, and if you're going to the ER, you can't really do that much either. So, I'm just going to sit there. Anyway, uh, National Public Sleeping. That's public sleeping. I've done it before. I've done it uh, at, uh, at the shoe store. 
You go to the shoe store, and my wife is searching. To me, and, and forgive me, Chi, <laughs> my, my wife loves to shop. I shop when I have, I, I shop, and most guys do this. They go out shopping when they have to go there to get something specific that they're shopping for, and they get it. They go in, they get it, and they leave. End of story. That's it, right? That's how guys work. The ladies, it's, it's shopping is an experience. It's not just something you, it, it, it's not a, uh, something that you do as a, uh, it's something you have to do. It's, it's an experience, right? And for my wife, she always calls shopping her therapy. <laughs> That's her therapy. <laughs> Goes out shopping. She's had enough of me for a while. She'll go out, take out the day and go shopping, right? <laughs> I can understand that. Now, uh, uh, if, if I were my wife and I wanted to get away from me for a while, I'd probably want to do that too. Uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, sometimes it, when I'd go to shopping with my wife, you know, and they have the chairs. They have the husband chairs there, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Even if you're not married, I think you know what I'm talking about. Those are the chairs. You you go to the clothing store uh, or the, the 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 lady, you know, the the, the ladies' uh, clothing store. Or you go to the shoe store, or something like that, and they have chairs there. Now there are some chairs there for you to try on the shoes and things like that. But not all the chairs are for that. There are some chairs that are there just for sitting down. And they're not for people sitting down that are shopping for shoes. They're there for the husbands to sit down in there while they watch their wives shop for shoes and do this or do this or do whatever. You know, or read a book or, or look at their, their phone or something else like that for half an hour while their wife is shopping for shoes. That, <laughs> am I being politically incorrect? I, look, I'm... I, I'm a husband. That's that's what happened. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling it like it is. That's what husbands do, right? Um, you go to the shoe store with your wife, and your wife is shopping for shoes, and most of the time the husband's sitting there in the chair going, how can I be more comfortable? <laughs> and taking that. Yes, I have done some public uh, sleeping there. So there you go. Uh, National Public Sleeping Day. Um, let's see. All right, National Tooth Fairy Day. Tomorrow is National Tooth Fairy Day. And uh, I do have some Tooth Fairy stories. I'm not going to regale you with them tonight because um, it will just go on and on. But my kids, when, uh, you know, of course, I was the Tooth Fairy. My, my kids got, caught on after a while. But uh, it was a lot of fun being the Tooth Fairy. It could be a little frustrating. To, it could be very, very... Um, uh, it, it was a cause for anxiety sometimes, you know, especially if, because uh, there were a couple of times when, when they lose a tooth and they stick it on their pillow and they go to bed at night, and then I'm thinking, well, as soon as they're asleep, I'll go in there and, and do the swap, right? The money for the, for the. okay, I am mean, telling the stories, aren't I? I? A couple of stories, okay? So one time, one night, I'm waiting for, uh, for them to go to bed, to go to sleep, and, um, uh, they, they're not going to sleep. You know, they, I, I didn't remember which kid it was. It was one of the two. Uh, and, uh, well, it was one of the two. So uh, they, they put the pillow, they put the tooth under their pillow. They go to, they're, they're, I guess they're too excited to sleep, waiting for the tooth fairy or something. I don't know. But they're not going to sleep right away. So I'm waiting for them to fall asleep. And I'm in the bed. Uh, and I'm it's like, okay, I'm waiting for them to go to sleep. So I make the swap so I can go to bed. Didn't happen. They're still awake. They're still, you know. So before I know it, I fell asleep. I I fell asleep, and um, uh, and and the next thing I know, I wake up and it's morning. It's morning. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's not good. So the kid's uh, expecting something under his pillow from uh, overnight from the tooth fairy, and of course the tooth fairy slept in. <laughs> Didn't show up. They don't know that. Uh, all they know is that they, they checked and the tooth was still there. And uh, so I, I uh, so the kid wakes up and goes, hey, my tooth's still there. And the tooth fairy didn't show up. And so you know, what happened? I want, and, and my wife's trying to come up with some sort of excuse, you know, like, oh, maybe the tooth fairy forgot or maybe they got lost or, what, you know, maybe it took a wrong turn at Albuquerque or maybe, you know, maybe they got in a, uh, a, a Rex or or something, and, and or maybe they were held up 
<laughs> or detained somewhere. Um, so, uh, so I, I, in a panic, I get up and I rush and I grab the first, you know, the first thing out of my wallet that I can grab. You know, I figure it's a, it's, I can put a dollar bill under there. And I run right in the room where they're not looking, stick it under the pillow, and then rush back out. And uh, and then my wife says, "Well, why don't you why don't you check again? Maybe maybe you missed it. Maybe you missed it." And uh, so the kid goes back in there, looks under it, and, and and starts yollering, "Hey, look! Look what the tooth fairy left me!" And 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 they go, "What did the tooth fairy leave? They left me a five dollar bill." I'm like, "They did? <laughs> they did?" Oh, 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 oh boy, let me check my wallet. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess the tooth fairy left a $5 bill. It's like I wasn't, uh, uh, can I borrow $5? <laughs> anyway, so uh, that was one of my tooth fairy stories. Yeah, I had a, I have a couple of them. Anyway, here's the National Tooth Fairy Day. It's also, a, it's also National Rare Disease Day USA. That's the last day in February. National Rare Disease Day USA. On the 28th. Um, all right, let me check the chat one more time. See what's going on. Let's see if face, the Facebook... Whoop, let's see if the... I think I messed up the Facebook chat there. All right, uh, what did I just do? All right, well, back to the Facebook chat. Uh, she says, I go shopping because I need a lot of therapy. I live with Savoyas. I'd rather buy shoes than pay a therapist. Um, that's, yeah, a good, good point. Yeah, <laughs> good point. So, uh, did I lose? Uh, do we lose the feed again here? Just a moment. Here we go. All right. So, Barnstar says. Uh, uh, let, let me go catch up on the chat here. I'm going back up here. Let's see. Uh, the square guy says, love a good husband chair. Yep, yep. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? It says, love it or hate it, Rick's spinning true facts right now. <laughs> that said, I enjoy shopping for Legos and games. I, you know, I, I, there's things that guys enjoy shopping for. Okay? It's, it's a different thing. But, well, once again, when you go shopping for, when you're shopping for Legos and games and things like that, uh, wherever you're going, the difference between men and women shopping is that women just go to shop and they're just, you know, they just go there and they're just shopping, right? Uh, we go there. When you go there, you're going to shop for Legos and games. You go out there with the in intention, with the with the the clear intention of shopping for Legos and games. And you go there and you're looking specifically for that. And that's what you get. And when you find what you want, you pay for it. You get the heck out of there. You go home and end and the story, right? That, that's, that's how a guy shops. And, and, and women women typically don't shop that way. Um, I can attest to that. But and it's nothing against women because I tell you what, my wife can find some great deals. Um, she can find some great deals shopping around. Stuff that I would have missed. You know, like I go and I shop for something, and if it's not there, that's okay. That's they don't have it. That's it. I'm going to go somewhere else or whatever. They don't have it. My wife, she she shops around, and she may not have, she may not have, uh, uh, or she may not find exactly what she's looking for, but sometimes she'll find something else that's an awesome deal that she said, well. I got I got this. So we needed this, but I and I got this, and I never would have found it had I not been shopping around for it, or shopping around for something else, or had I not kept shopping uh, instead of just leaving the store like you did, Rick. <laughs> and she does. She finds some awesome deals. She found a great deal uh, yesterday at uh, at the. Um, she was at a um, an estate sale, and she picked up some good deals. She picked up a really nice chair, uh, which she promptly. Which I, I promptly said, sure, I'll take it. Nice chair. I'm going to incorporate that. But uh, she wouldn't have found that kind of a deal if she hadn't been shopping around, you know, doing what she does, shopping around. And uh, so, I trust me, that that's. Um, I'm not making fun of of, of of her and saying that she's any. Uh, it's just that it's any that her method of shopping is any worse than mine because it's not it's actually better in some ways but um i'm just saying all i'm saying is that men and women have different 
uh, methods and habits of shopping. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I'm trying to save face here. <laughs> Uh, Barnstar says, I haven't lost a tooth for decades. Tooth fairy must hate me. Well, hopefully you haven't lost a to any teeth. I think, uh, you know, it, 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 once you, once you get to be, uh, um, once you get to be my age, you don't want to lose any teeth. <laughs> Trust me. When you get to be my age, you don't want to see the tooth fairy. You see the tooth fairy, uh, by your bed. There's a problem at my age. If you see the tooth fairy there, it's, uh, that's, that's scary. That's, that's, uh. Yeah, I don't want to see the tooth fairy anymore. Okay, <laughs> really. And um, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to skip some of that. A square guy says, in our family, we didn't hide the tooth under the pillow. We left it in a glass of water next to our bed. That's interesting. Why Why was that? Uh, square guy says, was always replaced with a $1 or $2 coin come morning. So, so how do they do that? They... Um, Regimen says, yes, we used a glass a lot easier to locate. I never tried that. Uh, Barnsher says, um, oh, he's talking to Regime man. Tom Antio says, did you ever accidentally drink the water at night? That should be an interesting answer. Regimen says, I like hardware stores. Yeah, I like hardware stores too. Uh, Squirka says, I don't know. Once I find what I've got, I'll go look at other stuff to see what else I can find. Yeah. But that's a little different. That's a little different from from uh, shopping around just to kind of shop around and see what's out there. Period. Uh, from the get go, right? Um, the square guy says, uh, Tommy Antio, thankfully, no, haha. So you didn't drink the water at night accidentally. <laughs> and uh, Red Gman says they sound like days made up by businesses. Uh, yeah, some of them are actually. I think some of them are. That square guy says they all are, <laughs> and uh, and square guy wants to know who uh, Saint Valentine is. Anyway, sounds made up to me. I think he was a real saint, but uh, I don't think he was really much of a saint uh, in, in terms of behavior. Um, Reggie Man says, "Yep, yeah, promotional days, but how uh, how do they get qualified to become national days? That is the real question. Rick might know. Actually, the person who would really know that." Uh, answer to the question would be my good friend Marlo, Marlo Anderson, who is the CEO of NationalDayCalendar.com, which is where I get these National Days from. NationalDayCalendar.com. If you go to NationalDayCalendar.com, they have a page there, and I've read it, you know. Uh, they have a page there explaining how they come up with the National Days, and some of them are existing National Days, you know, and then there are National Days that are National Days because there are National Days, like, like, Talk like a pirate day, Arr, you know. Then, of course, um, but some of the national days are uh, ones that, that that are done by businesses, and they have a they have a form on the site actually, but they have a specific protocol for what can qualify as a national day. So you go to nationaldaycounter.com, you can read all about that, and and you can contact Marlo if you want more information about it. Uh, he's the he's the CEO of nationaldaycounter.com. Um, when National Game Day, oh, let's see, the score guy says, when National Game Day came last up, I saw someone on Twitter trying to work out when it first started. Apparently, there's a registry companies or anyone can pay to have their day added. Then it gets included in National Day calendars like you have, I guess. And the score guy says, well, there you go. Yeah, um, that's that's pretty much, yeah, that's a lot of what it is. Not always, but a lot of it. There's certain national days that are national days because they're kind of federal national days and Things like that, or maybe a state deems it a national day or a city or something like that. But uh, there, a lot of them are actually, I think, driven by uh, by marketing. <laughs> Ed says, earlier I said that the bebop cannibal... Like, here we go. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm make sure I'm, I'm caught up here. Ed says, earlier I said that the bebop cannibal ate three squares a day, but Facebook ate the comment maybe just as well. And, uh, yeah, and, and Ed says, my shopping downfall, dollar stores. You know what, Ed? Um, I'm kind of with you there. Uh, dollar stores, I, I've spent quite a bit of time in dollar stores. Um, you can find some pretty good bargains at, bar, uh, at dollar stores. Trust me, you can find some pretty good bargains. 
Um, you can find a lot of junk there too, but but you know if you, you know what you're looking for, you know you go to the dollar store and you can, you kind of sift through the junk and you can find some real gems in there. Sometimes you really can. Uh, I have. I, I've I've been to the dollar store a few times and picked up a few things that. Uh, that and and sometimes I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm looking at something that I need. I'm thinking, well, you know, I just need this little item and I only I don't want to pay that much for it. I can just pick this up at the dollar store. I'll go down to the dollar store and pick it up, and and uh, and that's cool. Uh, dollar stores are great. There's definitely, they definitely serve a purpose. Uh, trust me, they definitely serve a purpose. Um, dollar stores do. Uh, yeah, I'm not averse to going to shop in the dollar stores. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> You'll find me there sometimes. Uh, and that's not just because I'm a cheap guy, although my wife would say, you're a cheap guy. <laughs> but she shops there too, so... <laughs> It's just another store to shop at, right? Uh, so anyway, I, you know what? I, I think that does it for the National Days, right? That does it for the National Days. I think we're good there. So it's uh, open chat. So um, as I promised um, at the beginning of the show, we're going to talk about a little bit about um, what's coming up. What's coming up. And I, I'm gonna, I was going to mention, okay, today is uh, this episode of the of the stream and the podcast is uh, the last episode for the season, for season two. And I'm going to tr- explain that just a little bit. Uh, when I first started, and if you if if you really want a history, a, a full history of this, I, I don't, I'm not going to delve, I'm not going to go too deep in the weeds on it. But if uh, if you go back to episode 100, with which was the uh, Hundreds episode of the wine stream, yes, of course. Uh, uh, that you know, I I covered the very first episode and how the whole wine stream started and and what led up to that. Now, after we did the first episode, I had a break. I had a week uh, a week break there because I went to Podfest and and uh, in Orlando. We tended because we're, my son and I are longtime uh, podcasters, and we went to Podfest. And I sort of toyed around with the idea of using, you know, I, I, I was thinking at the first, the first time I did the wine stream, I was thinking, oh, this is kind of a one-off, you know. And then everybody in the wine stream, we had like uh, somewhere around between 200 and 400 people show up for the, for the first wine stream that watched it, the uh, very first one. It was an impromptu thing, more or less. And, um, and they say, oh, yeah, you got to do some more. I love this. I love this. It's really cool. So when we went to Podfest. Um, I told everybody about it, and uh, people were saying, "Oh, that's a great idea! You got to keep doing it. That's a great idea for a podcast and a live stream. You got to just keep doing it." You had, especially if you had the response that you had. I mean, having you know several hundred people show up for this event um, just out of the blue it was was pretty cool, you know. And, and, and there are a lot of podcasters that don't get. Two or three hundred downloads for their podcast every week. I mean, there there are There's some some that don't. Uh, I know I've been there too. <laughs> uh, but uh, so, so everybody was giving me great feedback on this thing. So when I got back from Podfest, that was in March, the the, the first uh, week in in March, the first week in March. Uh, I said, well, maybe I'll, I'll I'll do another one, and we'll we'll start making we'll make it a regular thing. So I came back, and I was all revved up for it. So that's when we started doing it. Now I think the week we came back, I think I had uh, another week delay. No, no, there was no week delay on that one. So it was just one week that I missed while I went to Podfest. So that was the break between the first and the second episode. So at the end of season one. Uh, and the season one ended because it came around again that next March. Now, March, Podfest again. It was the next Podfest. So we had to take a week off to go to Podfest. So there was no wine stream that week because we went, we went to, uh, to Podfest again. So it wasn't going to be a wine stream. Although there were, there were people there that said, why don't you do a live stream right here? But I didn't really feel comfortable doing that. And I, I didn't really bring all the equipment to set up to do it. So we just didn't do one that week. So the week after we came back, I uh, I think I got a cold or something. I th- no no I tell you what the week after we got back is when I had the flu. I came back with the flu, and that was just about the time the pandemic started too, and the lockdowns occurred, and uh, so I caught the flu. So I was out for another week with the flu. So we did two weeks off there when I didn't do any streaming, and then when I came back when. My my voice wasn't a hundred percent, but uh, it, it was it was uh, 
uh, feel good enough to do a, a live stream. So that was kind of like our, our break between season one and season two. So now we're coming up to season two. It's March. The week of March, the, the, that weekend of March is coming up next weekend. And I figure, why don't I just, just go with this, just stay with this. So that's what we're doing. Uh, but I'm doing two weeks. I'm doing two weeks off here. And the reason is because I'm going to be doing some things with the studio. I'm going to be doing some upgrades to improve the experience that we're all having with this. So um, I have a few repairs to make on the studio, the studio uh, itself. Do uh, I'm going to give it a paint job and, and, and do some painting, finish off some, some things with... Uh, uh, sound panels on the walls. I've got sound panels across these two things that you see on either side. And let me give another shot here, a long shot. These are sound panels, by the way. They're they're decorative, but they're also they also serve a function. They are sound panels to help to help uh, improve the sound because they're also podcast in here too. Those are not the only sound panels in this room. I have sound panels across the whole studio, except for one little section up, up there that I, I can't show you at the moment, but it's, because uh, I'm not going to turn the camera on, but um, there are sound panels throughout most of the rest of the room. I have some more sound panels that I've been putting together, and they're waiting to be hung to finish off the room. But I can't hang them yet until I do the paint job, and I can't do the paint, I can't do the painting yet until I fix... Uh, uh, a couple of little little things going on the walls and the ceiling there. So I'm, I'm going to do that and then paint it and then uh, put up the sound uh, booths and, and it'll sound a lot better. It will sound a lot better. If you go back, as a matter of fact, if you watch the 100th episode or parts of it and I showed a clip of the first episode, it was like a five minute clip of the first episode and then you go back to the current episode or, or you know, we go back from the clip and back to the current episode, you can see there's a huge difference. You can hear it. If you listen to the podcast, you can hear it. There's a huge difference between the sound quality on the first episode and the, uh, the, episode, the, the rest of the 100th episode. And that is because I treated, I sound treated the room after that. The room was not really sound treated at that point. So it was very echoey and very, uh, a lot of uh, reverberation coming from the walls and the ceiling and that sort of thing. And it was just, it sounded horrible. So, uh, and realized the first episode I was doing it because it was just impromptu. It was, I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't really um, uh, uh, set up for that. As a matter of fact, I wasn't set up for streaming at all. So, uh, I sort of built this as I went along. And uh, at the end of the first season, I did I made some upgrades here to, to add, you know, the, this nice desk. Because if you look at the early episodes, I didn't have this nice desk. I just had a... A little desk, cheap desk with a tablecloth over it, and we, we you know, did that. But uh, I've got this really nice desk now. I love this desk, and uh, it's big, and it does what I want it to, to do. And uh, I, I've got a lot of stuff set up here. I've got monitors and everything else going, cameras, things like that. Unfortunately, we're working off one camera. I'm doing all my switching, all the switching that I'm doing, like this, and the switching I'm doing here. All the switching is off one camera. And I'm doing some, now here's some behind the scenes stuff, okay? This is all behind the scenes. A few of the secrets, I'm giving you some of the production secrets of Drink With Rick. This is all coming from one camera, okay? From one camera with some effects, limited effects, because I can't do that many effects because this computer I'm using is very, very old. But it was the uh, best one that I had for doing what I needed to do. And that's why you you saw earlier tonight. I was trying to do something fancy with the with the uh, uh, video, and uh, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work out too well. So uh, uh, that, that's that's what the, yeah, that's what happened there. So uh, what I'm going to do here in the next two weeks is I'm going to uh, fix some things with the studio, some phys uh, physically some things with the studio, do the paint job. Finish off the sound uh, treatment that I've never really to finish on the other side of the room. Uh, I have built, you were asking me, uh, the score guy, you were asking me about the, PC, the new PC, if I built it, uh, if, when I was going to build it, or if I was going to build it during the break. Uh, no, I am actually not going to build it during the break because um, 
And Ed says Saturday wino. Yeah. <laughs> now the first the first episode I was calling it the Saturday night wino. Uh, that that changed a little bit because I, I, I it sounded too negative. Uh, it made me sound too much like a lush, and I didn't want to give that impression. Uh, so and you know I'm going easy on this wine tonight for a couple of reasons. One is because I'm I'm not too, still not too sure about this wine. It's gotten better as it's opened up. It was not... Uh, oh, Ed, I got something else for you here. I know I forgot it. Uh, remind me a second. Let me finish this other thought. And remind me, I'm, I'm, I've, I've got a, a personal uh, response for you from something that you that you uh, texted me or that you put in the chat uh, at the end of the show last week. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So uh, the PC... So, that Square Guy, you were asking me uh, when I was going to build the PC. I'm not going to build the PC. No, I am not going to build the new PC. Uh, and you say, Rick, why are you not going to build the, PC, the new PC? I'm not going to, uh, and I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to build the new PC because I've already built it. Uh, yeah. Yes, I've already built it. I, I built it a couple of weeks ago. As a matter of fact, during the week, I built it. I put it together. I built it, and I gave it a 24-hour burn-in. You know, and for those of you who don't know, a 24-hour burn-in, it's a period where you, uh, like when you're a PC builder, as I used to be in, in another life, uh, I used to build PCs, and um, uh, I would do a 24-hour burn-in, and that would ensure that it, because when you build a PC from new parts, typically, if a part's going to fail, it's usually going to fail. Not always. I mean, I might turn this thing on tomorrow and something might fail. I don't know. I hope not. Knock on wood. And I don't know if this is real wood or not, but I'm going to to uh, assume it is. Uh, when, uh, when you do that 24-hour burn-in, you have time to watch it and determine, run it through its paces, do some testing after you install Windows or whatever operating system you're going to install, and, and then all the drivers and the things you're going to put into the system, and you let it run uh, just straight for 24 hours to burn it in, give that burn-in time, get it used to running, and uh, also check the benchmarks. Check the benchmarks, make sure there's no, there are no anomalies, no issues, no errors, no, no, uh, no problems with it. And uh, you watch it and make sure that uh, it's going to keep running. If a part fails a good deal of the time, it's going to fail within that 20, the first 24-hour period. Not always, but often. Especially if you haven't been using any kind of, uh, of uh, uh, static protection. As some people don't do when they're building a computer. They don't do any, any, SD, uh, you know, uh, any protection for, for uh, or anti-static protection. And... Uh, Sometimes it won't take a part out, but it'll it'll cripple it somewhat. It'll damage it enough so that it'll fail at some point. So you watch it. You give it a 24 to 40 hour, and I did mine for about 72 hours, and it looked fine. So I, I uh, it's waiting to go on online tomorrow. It's going to go officially online tomorrow. I'm going to set it up, and uh, it's going to be really exciting uh, because this PC is just uh, amazing. It's it's uh, latest. Technology. Uh, every, every, I put the latest in, in there. It is a gaming class PC, but I'm not really using it for gaming per se. I'm using it for production, for video production. And I already have some things installed on it. I've got DaVinci Resolve installed on it, which I'm really excited about. Uh, DaVinci uh, Resolve is, is uh, it's just an amazing, amazing application. It's got everything built in for doing production and post-production work. I'm going to be able to uh, take this. Now, I'm using this for work, too but I'm also using it for my personal stuff. Remember my films? Well, I'm having, I, I've had some transferred already. I'm having some more of them transferred, but the, uh, including the feature, the one that I, I talked about before, the Space Apes uh, movie, um, that has already been done, and it's actually on this PC, but I need to fix it and edit it and get it uh, uh, set up for, for release. 
I could not do that on my current computer. It just did not have the power. This one allows me to do that so I can do all the things that I wanted to do with this thing and so I can I can put it out and release it. So I'm really excited about that. There's just so many amazing things I'm going to be able to do with this computer production-wise, post-production-wise. It's going to be really cool. Also, I'm going to be using this uh, somewhat for, at least for the time being, for running OBS and for doing the live stream, which what that means is I'm going to be able to have multiple cameras. I'm going to be able to do set this studio up. The studio is going to be set up with multiple cameras. So I'll be able to swap back and forth, switch back and forth between things. It's going to be awesome. So I'm going to be able to do all the things that I wanted to do in the, you know, the, in, in the first couple of seasons, I'm going to be able to do it in this next one. And it's going to be, I'm, I'm really excited about it. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be really cool. I'll be able to do some, some pretty cool stuff with it. Anyway, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to be doing the next two weeks. So uh, we've got two weeks of downtime. I'm going to be fixing all this stuff up. Yeah, and you're going to see a, a little different look from, for, the, for, the, uh, for the set on the back. It's going to be a little bit diff different look. Uh, it's going to look much the same except for some things. I'm, I'm going to clean up a lot of this and because uh, uh, I'm going to multi-purpose this set, not just for the wine stream, but also for the upcoming coffee thing I want to do. I want to do a coffee stream, and, and we've, I've talked about it, yes, but I want to do that. But I couldn't do that yet because of all, all these models. <laughs> so a lot of inside stuff I'm, I'm giving you, but this is a big, but look, you're part of the show right? You're part of the show, so you need to know this. This is on a need-to-know basis, and you need to know because you're part of this. So uh, I'm really excited about it. I know you'll be excited about it. We'll have a great time when we come back with this, and hopefully we won't have uh, any more glitches. I just want to let you all know also that uh, here's the other things that I want to bring up the quality a little bit. Um, we, we went to fiber a little while back, but I'm still running uh, this on a, a lower resolution, and the reason is because of this whole computer down here, because it can't handle the uh, uh, the higher res and uh, and streaming that. So that's why we're still kind of like on a lower resolution tier, uh, and it's not because of the bandwidth. Now I did have we did have issues with bandwidth before, but uh, the last uh, well, about seven or eight months ago we switched to fiber. We got we got uh, 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 a fiber and uh, here and uh, for the studio uh, for this purpose and also because both my wife and I work from home and we needed the bandwidth so we got that in place so I'll be able to actually stream the show at a higher res so we'll have a higher quality show all the way around so I'm really really looking forward to this I'm really excited about it um, and uh, I think it's, it's gonna be cool I think it's gonna be really cool so um, Let's see what else we got. Anything else going on? On oh Nathan, Nathan's in uh, the chat on uh, YouTube. Nathan's great to see you. Nathan H says I was having trouble watching you on Twitch, but it's fine here. Oh, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad it is. And uh, don't no no worries wherever you are. I'm 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 uh, I'm gonna try to keep up with you in the chat here on this. Uh, but I'm glad you're sticking with me. I, I'm glad you didn't bail. Some people would would say ah oh, this is. This sucks. I'm going to bail because uh, we lost the stream. But technical things happen. Technical things happen all the time, especially right now with me. And hopefully when all this is done in three weeks, I'm going to be back. We're going to be back on the 20th. That's the plan. The plan is to be back unless something weird happens. And hopefully nothing really weird will happen. Um, but this is a wine stream. <laughs> Who knows? It's life. Life is, can get in the way. Who knows? But uh, hopefully, hopefully, on March 20th, 2021, we'll be back in action. Uh, not unlike the Looney Tunes. Another, another film reference there. I know. That's just the, that's the, way, I, that's the way I roll. <laughs> uh, that square guy says, heck yeah, we're a part of the show. Of course you are. Of course you are. Uh, <laughs> And and if you're looking to, to to say how much how much you're getting paid for being on the show, uh, trust me, I'm not getting paid for this either. <laughs> we're all doing this for we're all doing this for fun because I trust me, I'm not getting paid either. Uh, this has cost me a lot. I have not made any money from this. Okay, honest. I, yeah, I pitch some things and, and from time to time, but it's just stuff that I, I want to pitch or something that I really like or believe in. It's nothing that I make any money on. 
Uh, trust me, I am. Look, I'm still waiting for Jeff Bezos to give me a few cents for a couple of sales of this stuff, and that hasn't happened yet, so I, I'm not holding my breath. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, let's see. Red G Man says, Rick, when you say old computer, how old? Well, that's a very good question. Okay, well, here's how what I'm looking at I've got two computers under this desk. Here's some more inside inside info info right excellent um i have two computers on this desk i have one computer that i'm that i have up here that i'm monitoring myself and i can monitor myself through here the, the audio and i rely on the audio to know if something goes down because oftentimes i'm talking to you here i'm looking at you at the camera i'm looking at you um or i'm, I'm reading the chats so the, sometimes the only way that I know something is awry or something is amiss is if uh, if I lose audio. And that's what it gets me to panic sometimes. So, uh, so I have this audio. It's going into the one computer where all of the streams are coming back to me or feeding back to me. Facebook. I have Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Periscope, Twitter. Uh, I've got all these feeds coming back to me. Uh, on this one computer and the chats all the chats all the individual chats so i switch back and forth between the, the individual chats right now i don't have the i don't have a computer that's powerful enough to do all the streaming and hold all the chats so i'm having to do this on different computers this pc that i'm doing this for and that I, I, I'm, I'm listening back on and watching back on is um this is an Intel. This is a, an older Intel. This was a, a hand-me-down from work when my when my boss uh, upgraded uh, PCs in the office. Uh, he had this one, the spare one that was that's like 10 years old, 10, 12 years old. And he says, "Well, I'm going to junk this." And I said, "Well, can I have it to use for spare PC? Because I always use a spare PC around here for various things." And he says, "Sure, take it." So I took this home and I uh, repurposed it. I reconditioned it a little bit. And um, I think I added a, um, I think I've got an SSD drive in here. And uh, I think I, I may have added a little more memory to it, too. I don't remember. But it, this, is an, this is an i3 down, down there. So it tells you how old it is. This is a, a, an Intel. It's an i3. Uh, and uh, so th uh, that's, that's an old, that's a 3. That's a, that's uh, that's an old, pretty old PC. And that still works, still runs fine. It runs Windows 10. And I upgraded it to Windows 10 as soon as the, the free upgrade came out. I made a point to go in here. Because it originally had, I think, it originally had XP on it, I think. Uh, and then it was upgraded to Windows uh, 7 or something. And then uh, then when the, the uh, when uh, Microsoft offered the free upgrade, I, I jumped on that and, and upgraded it to Windows 10. And uh, then uh, the... Uh, the other computer here, the one that we're streaming on, I got a second computer here that's actually one of those little book computers. Yes, I am streaming, I'm multi-streaming from a little book, one of those little square book size computers. That's an i5. That's an i5. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because that was another computer that actually my son Tommy uh, you know, we're both ham operators. We're both ham radar operators, and we'd go to ham fest and things like that. He was at one of the ham fests that I was actually working uh, for my for my job by two way radios. He was at one of the ham fests with me, and uh, one of the guys there, one of the, our fellow hams there, uh, who who builds PCs, he was selling. Uh, he refurbishes some of these old computers, and he, and he was reselling it. And he sold that one. And at the time, Tommy didn't really have a decent computer to work with. He, he was working off of really, really old machines. And uh, at the time, this wasn't that old. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so he, I think the computer was like $300 or something. And Tommy had a, a 100 or 150 or something. And I said, well, he says, I really need this computer, Dad. So I said, well, look, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll spring for the for the rest. I'll spring for the balance. You, you got put in what you want, and I'll spring for the rest. He says, sure, and so we bought it. And it served its purpose for him. You know, he used it for school and for uh, for other stuff. And uh, then he when he upgraded, he got, a, he got an i7 later on that he got. Actually, that's another good deal, that he got at a 
an estate sale. He picked up a, like this super powerful i7 machine. I what did he pay? He paid a hundred dollars for it for this thing. It was an unbelievable deal. It was an unbelievable deal. They were just they were just they were moving. They had to they're getting rid of the estate and they had to you know selling off the stuff. And he he picked this thing up for it was a hundred bucks or something. It was an incredible deal. Um, just an amazing computer. He did a few upgrades with it, and it's been his gaming machine and his streaming machine and everything. It's just um, um, fantastic. I mean, it was, I've never seen anybody get a deal that good before So uh, on computers. And I used to sell them. <laughs> so, uh, so he upgraded that. So he gave me, uh, originally this machine, uh, we, uh, I refurbished to give to my wife, Chi, because she wanted a little computer to have on the side. Um, and she wasn't really using that much, but then when I started streaming and I said, oh, wait a minute, I've got my, my machine over here that I use for editing. I can't, you know, my day job, I can't really use that over here. So, uh, I didn't have another powerful computer. I didn't have anything. Everything else was really, really old, like an I3 or something. I'm going really long on this, right? <laughs> so, um, so I, I, and I remembered this, this little book computer, and I thought, well, this is really, really old. But then I looked at it and I said, wait a minute, this is an i5. That's the minimum that I need to stream with, with uh, this, this camera and, and with OBS and a couple of other things that I wanted to do. That's perfect. That'll serve my purposes for the time being. Now, unfortunately, it, uh, it didn't work out too well for multiple cameras, and it does have its limitations. I did still upgrade it. There's an SSD in that, too, by the way. It can't be upgraded anymore because it's one of those little mini computers. So, uh, so I reach. I I'm maxing this thing out. So when you see it go down, and I apologize when it does. When you see it go down or the stream stops, it's because this thing is literally being maxed out. Uh, the the most that it can do, it's being maxed. So that's that's what we're that's what we're uh, looking at here. So now that I've got this new PC, I think this will. We resolve all of that, hopefully. So uh, let's see. Well, let's catch up on the streams. Um, that square guy says, uh, uh, oh, he says, that's super exciting. He said, it's congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And square guy says, I might be building a new PC soon. Um, you should play uh, phasm uh, Phasmophobia with me. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I'll, see, I'll see if I can get that in somehow. Uh, the, 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 the square guy says, I'm, I might be building a new PC. What kind of PC you want to build? Or should I ask? I mean, it's a gamer, Rick. Yeah. It, Barnstar says, gamer, Rick. Yeah. Uh, multi, uh, square guy says, multicam. I, uh, heck yeah. Yep. Barnstar says, so you can do Lego streams. Well, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? I can do some. Le I can't do. I can't come close to, to that. I'd spend all my time talking. I wouldn't even put a single Lego on there. Um, I don't know how I don't know how the square guy I don't know how you do it to keep concentrating on building these things and, and being able to keep up with the chat at the same time. I really don't know how you can do it. That's some multitasking. I can't look. I have trouble drinking and talking at the same time, right? And that's about all I've been doing for the last hour is talking. I haven't really been doing much drinking. Uh, square guy says, "Ha ha." Um, Oh, uh, Red G Man says, Rick, when you say old, oh, I did read that, didn't I? <laughs> I guess I went too far back. The score guy says, there's talk of maybe building a PC for Darcy. Well, she deserves one, doesn't she? Yeah. Darcy should have her own PC, right? <laughs> I'm rooting for Darcy. Okay. There's, a, I, I, I think you should build a PC for Darcy. Absolutely. Absolutely. That score guy says she's a Mac gal, but there are PC games she wants to be able to play. Oh well, see, once, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I know about the Mac crowd, and, and and I have no nothing against the Mac crowd, and there's some real Apple fanboys out there, real some real real uh, fanboys, but um, and it's fine. But I tell you what, if you build a really good PC for her, like, she'll probably never go back to to a Mac, at least not for. For gaming, by in any sense of the word, because I tell you what, with some of the new, with the AMD chip. Now, this is what's in this PC, right? Actually, I have a Ryzen nine in this new computer. It's a Ryzen nine. It has uh, what have we got here? We've got a GeForce. Um, uh, man, I can't even think of what I got in here. But I tell you, what, I got some cool stuff in here. Okay, one of the things I have in here 
I did not put an SSD drive in here. I am M.2. Okay, this has got this is running an M.2 one terabyte chip in there. That is the primary drive. I'm going to add a couple of SSDs in there. I'm going to add them in because I'm going to need the storage space. But the primary drive is an M.2 drive. The first time I turned this thing on, it was just amazing. It just blew me away. It really did. It was just super fast. Uh, um, the video card I have in there has uh, has one HDMI port and four. Um, what have I got in here? I have to go back and look. <laughs> I've got. Uh, uh, yeah, I gotta have to go back and look and see what I got in here. Anyway, but uh, I don't want to go through too much in the specs right now. It's getting late anyway. But I, I, I yeah. it's a, it's a pretty powerful PC. It's, it's, it's got a lot in here. Uh, Square guy says, uh, oh, if you don't know much about the game, it's a spooky ghost hunting game. A game I've heard of it. I've heard of it. I've never played it, but I've heard of it. Um, Reggie Man says, I heard you might crowdsource it. <laughs> Reggie Man might not like that. Uh, if you don't know much about the game, it's a it's a spooky good. Is that the one I've heard of? You mentioned that I think. Have you mentioned that on the stream? Where did I hear about that? Where did I hear about that? Um, I th did you mention it once before on your stream? I think that's where I, I've heard of it. I don't know. It sounds familiar. It sounds familiar. Not really into spooky ghost hunting games per se, but. Uh, uh, I'm trying to figure out where I heard of that before. I know I heard it from somewhere. Um, oh, well. Uh, Reggie Eman says, if you can get it done that way, why not? Uh, he meant I might crowdfund Darcy's PC. Yeah, I'm still trying to think of the game, though. Spooky Ghost Hunter. The last Spooky Ghost Hunter game I, I uh, played was, uh, it was uh, Afraid of the Dark. I think that's what it was. And now that goes way, way, way back. It was an adventure game. That goes way, way back. And that's the last spooky ghost hunting game that my wife and I played. We actually both played it. And it was on a PC. It was on a, a an old PC. It was on a 286. Yeah, believe it or not. A 286, yes. A 286. What do you mean? No, it was a 386. I'm sorry. It was on a 386. Okay, that's not that's not much better, is it? <laughs> and by today's standards. Still a very old computer. Uh, anyway, the score guy says he meant I might crowdfund Darcy's PC. I played Fast uh, Mophobia on Halloween and again on Friday night. I know Afraid. Okay, you know Afraid of the Dark. You do know that game. Uh, she was trying to remember the name of the game, and I was saying, uh, yeah, I think it was called uh, Afraid of the Dark. Not to be confused with After Dark, which, believe it or not, I still play the After Dark games. I've got the After Dark games on on several of my computers that I still like to play those goofy old games um and, and yeah mushu tiles and thing and and, and uh, the flying toaster bit and all that kind of stuff yeah uh mowing maniac and things like that i still play those games because of, I, I don't know just something nostalgically fun about it but um <laughs> it's it's not easy to watch when uh, unless you put it in um uh, in, in in low res mode uh, because uh uh, and, and, and you know when you're looking at it, today's monitors is like super small and you can't really see you know it's just doesn't work too well so you have to put in compatibility mode for i think windows 98 or something anyway so uh, uh then you put it in a 640 by 480 resolution i think well, what, you, what you have to do to get it to to fill the screen and then it looks kind of crappy then anyway but um but it's still fun it's still fun to play those but yeah afraid of the dark that was uh, an adventure game that was kind of spooky creepy kind of thing you go around hunting for clues to, for something i don't remember it's so long since i played that game it, and you know what when we got the game it was on floppy disks it was on three and a half inch floppy disks and there were like ten, uh, i don't know like half a dozen maybe 10 of them that we had to load in to load these things in one at a time to get the game loaded it was it was uh floppy disks 1.44 megabyte floppies. Now that goes way back, doesn't it? Um, so you know, Afraid of the Dark, so you know what I'm talking about. And and um, the square guy says, Phasmophobia is more grounded. It's based on the those ghost hunting shows. Oh, I know the ones you're talking about. 
uh, you need to use equipment like spirit boxes and EMF readers to determine what kind of ghost you're dealing with. So this is really more like some of those, uh, those, those uh, ghost hunting shows like on sci that sci-fi would run all the time, uh, sci-fi channel. Um, and Tom Antio says, Phasmophobia is so fun to stream. I guess I got to show my dad, huh? <laughs> I guess so. Uh, says, hey, dad, ever... Uh, was it, ever wanted to hunt ghosts? Not really. I try to stay away from that. Um, I, I'm not a ghostbuster. Uh, Square Guy says, wait, wait, I think we got mixed up. I'm thinking of the game Alone in the Dark. Um, yeah, I think, isn't that what it was? Alone in the Dark. No, wait, wait. You're No, no, you're right. You're not mixed up. Alone in the Dark, I think that was the name of it. Afraid of the Dark, what I call it. I don't remember. Was it Afraid of the Dark, Alone in the Dark? I don't remember, but I, it was something in the dark. It was something in the dark. No, I think Alone in the Dark is the one that you're thinking of. I think that was the title, Alone in the Dark. See, my memory is... Uh, I need more wine. What the heck? I'm not... I don't know if I want to drink too much of this. Uh, that square guy says, I have a collection of floppy disk games. And, uh, and Barnstar says he, he misses the old floppy disk games. Yeah, I think that was the name of it. I think it was the name of it was Alone in the Dark. So Ed says, uh, what was it I said or asked at the end of the last show? Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me, Ed. As always, my good friend Ed Anthony comes through again because I have it right here. And it's almost, it's at the end of this show. And I don't want to miss it again because I don't want to be two for two on missing stuff. Okay, remember the last episode I had one more thing I wanted to try. Just one more thing, as Columbo used to say. Uh, that I wanted to to try to taste with the wines, right? And it was this. It was it was this cake. It was this lemon cake from Nothing Bunt Cakes. I'm not a I'm not I'm not pr I'm promoting it. Okay, I'm just uh, I would love this Nothing Bunt Cakes. And at the end of the show, I was going to try it, but I'd had so much of the other wine and all the sugary stuff and everything. And I just at the, by the time the end of the show came around, I was like, oh man, I, I don't think I can put any more sugar in my body. I can't, I can't really do that. I have not had that much of the wine tonight. I can do this. So, and then Ed, you were the one that uh, at the very end of the show, I saw your last, your last um, text in the chat that said, hey, what about the cake? So tonight we're going to do the cake. We're going to do the cake. So this is, um, this is nothing but cake. It's a little cake. Yeah, it is the same cake. It is the same cake. Okay. No, I did not leave it here a whole week in the studio. I did not leave it in the studio a whole, whole week. What I did do was after the show, because I wanted to make sure that, 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 that I got this for Ed. Um, I wanted to make sure that I got this. So um, I took it downstairs right after the show and I stuck it in the freezer. And it was in the freezer for, for I don't know, a few hours, 12 hours. And then uh, Chi came downstairs, uh, I think, d during breakfast and said, hey, what's this cake doing in the freezer? <laughs> she goes, you should put the cake in the freezer. It's going to dry it out. Well, I mean, it's sealed up. It's sealed up with air in it, so I don't think it's going to dry out as much as something a cake that's already been opened or something. But uh, I, I kind of figured since it would have been sealed up and never opened that it would probably be okay. Uh, she said, no, stick it in the fridge. So I stuck it in the fridge, and it's been in the fridge all week, and it'll keep, it'll keep in the fridge. Um, so I'm going to attempt, I'm going to open this up and attempt to try it now. This is the nothing bunt cake. This is a lemon cake. We're going to try this and uh, I'm looking forward to it because, uh, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's really that good. It's just awesome. Oh, I got to get some icing. Got to have icing on it, right? Nothing but, nothing bunt cake. Hmm. Oh my. Hmm. It's still good. After a week. It's still, mmm. Wait a minute. And it's not dried out. It's not free, you know, it's not freezer burned. It's not dried out like you'd, you'd expect a cake to be. If you stick a cake in the fridge for a week and it gets all dried out and you got to throw it away. This is still very moist. And that's because it never opened. It was all completely sealed up. Oh, man. Mmm. This is good cake. Mmm. Awesome. Let's see it with the wine. Whoa. Okay. Now, this wine has had a couple of hours to open up. Two hours we've been doing this? Goodness. 
it's open up for two. It's it's we've we've been open. It's opened up. It tastes better now, but it tastes even better with this cake because the lemon icing and the lemon flavor of the cake really really adds to the wine. Mixes pretty well with this wine. Of course, wines and desserts they often go together pretty well. This is pretty awesome. This is awesome, and Ed, this is why I didn't want to try it at the end of the show. Aside from the fact that I forgot, actually, but <laughs> we won't tell anybody that. Um, but uh, too much sugar—that's that's too that's too, whoa, that's that's a sugar rush there. I'm I'm not going to get to sleep for a while. I'll tell you that much. So I think um, I'm going to save the rest of this for later. Really good cake, really awesome cake, and the combination is pretty good. Pretty good. Um, that square guy says, Afraid of the Dark was a Nickelodeon game from what I could find. Ha ha. Yeah, you probably played Alone in the Dark. Um, all good. Yeah, I, I remember Afraid of, yeah, Afraid of the Dark. Yeah, I remember there were two legit titles. I don't remember that. Yeah, Alone in the Dark. That was it. I'm pretty sure it was Alone in the Dark. You're right. Barnstar says, it Looks like it would have been a tasty pairing. Um, and the chat pause due to scroll. Oh, there we go. Looks like it would have been a tasty pairing. Glad it was. And I so am I because if it hadn't been, I don't have a bucket. I don't have a spit bucket up here because I generally don't spit these wines out. Although have, there have been occasions where I've wanted to. Far, few and far between. Look, we're, we're going long. We're going long. I was going to talk about weather radius for a minute, but I think I'm going to skip it this week. Remember, you can use promo code wine show. I'll, I'll throw that up real quick. Um, Weather radios, if you're looking for a weather radio, go to buy2wayradios.com, buy2wayradios.com. Use the promo code wine show. Wine show is W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W. At checkout, save 5% off your order when you order a weather radio or any kind of radio from buy2wayradios.com. Now, for full disclosure, I work for buy2way radios. I am the product manager. I am not making any extra money by promoting this, okay? I'm not getting a stipend of any sort for doing that. It's just because... I got a promo code because I work for the company, and I want to share it with you. I want to give you the promo code. And uh, my boss said, hey, it's okay. It's fine. Do it. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. So um, you know what, how I feel about uh, emergency weather radios. Get one. Uh, disasters happen all the time, uh, you know, a lot of time. Um, there's always some kind of disaster going on somewhere around the world. Too many, in fact. And uh, we had a huge storm that came through last week. My, my, my sister and my brother-in-law uh, and my nephew were out of power out in Texas for, a, for just about a week. I think they're just now getting their power back. Uh, devastating stuff. So you want to be prepared, go to ready.gov. That's ready.gov, G-O-V. Okay, this is a government website. And they've got a checklist of all the things that you need to be prepared. Put together an emergency kit. For for uh, at least enough for 72 hours for provisions in case you lose power or something like that happens, you know, like flooding, or or, or uh, tornadoes, hurricane disasters, any earthquakes, anything like that, get an emergency kit ready, please. And that's very very important, and that's what I want to leave you with uh, for the end of this show, pretty much. Um, that's pretty much all I got, and uh, we're going along. We're going along. So, um, but it's been a great time. It's been a great time. And look, it's the last show of the season. Why not? Okay, why not? Uh, in summary, just to give you my final thoughts on this, I'm going to pour a little more wine just to just to check it out one more time. I think this is uh, hmm. one more taste. Yeah, it's opening up now. Now now that it's opened up, now the initial taste I wasn't too crazy about. It. Okay, this is my final summary on this wine. And this is what we're drinking. We're drinking the Verbo. The Verbo. This is, uh, uh, no, it's not pronounced Aglianico, okay? It's, it's not pronounced Aglianico. It's pronounced, <laughs> and after a couple of, uh, a bit of this, it doesn't matter how you pronounce it, but it's uh, Aglianico, uh, okay? It's pronounced Aglianico. <laughs> Aglianico del Vulture. And uh, like I said, after a little bit of this wine, you don't care how you pronounce it as long as you can drink it, because that's the important thing, right? Not how much, not what you call it, but but uh, but that that you can drink it. 
and it was drinkable. When I first got this wine, and I, I'll, I'll tell you what, I tasted some blackberry. I didn't taste a whole lot of other stuff in it because the alcohol got in the way a little bit, and also the tannin it was, it was really strong. And I, uh, it was it was very bold wine, so it kind of was off putting for me at first. I was like, you know, I don't know really what I'm tasting here, um, but I tasted a few things, and it, it seemed a little it, it seemed a little oaky, but uh, kind of leathery. But I, I got the impression right away that I really needed to open up this wine a bit. I really did. So that's what I did. Now that I've opened it up, I've got a different. I've got a different opinion of this wine, slightly different opinion. Uh, Nathan, by the way, I'm checking uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, here, and Nathan says it's uh, cool that you stream on multiple platforms at once. All I have is a crappy laptop that's 12 years old at this point. You know, you got to go with what you you you, you got to do with what you what you got, I and mean, that's what I've had to do. You make do with what you got, and and then when as time goes on, you kind of work up, and that's it's been a long road to get to where I am right now. This didn't start. All of a sudden, you know, it, it took a long time to, to build it up, and I'm still building it up. Nathan says, uh, Darcy deserves a PC and a raise. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stay out of that one, okay? But, uh, yeah, Darcy, absolutely. She's she's really she's really cool. She's really sweet. And, and, and yeah, uh, Darcy does deserve a PC, um, absolutely. Um, our, uh, let's see, our was a show on Nickelodeon back in the 90s called Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yes, um, Yes, uh, Nathan, that, that's that's it. Are You Afraid of the Dark? That was the full name of the show in Nickelodeon. I remember that. I remember catching a little pieces of episodes on it uh, way back in the day. That was back in the 90s, early 2000s, right? It was in the, in the early 2000s. Maybe it was a little bit later than that. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, Red G-Man says, don't forget toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, uh, toilet paper is, is on the list, I think. It's on the list of, of uh, required item, you know, items to put in your emergency uh, to-go kit. Uh, Red G-Man says, Rick, have you tasted drunk my Australian derif? Uh, oh, any Australian derif. I, was, I, I, I read that wrong. Sorry. Rick, have you tasted drunk any Australian derif? Uh, I've had some Australian wine, so great wine is from Australia, by the way. Uh not so, not so much. But I've had some other Australian wines that were quite good, quite good, by the way. Um, I enjoy those. And we're going to have some more uh, as as the in, in the next uh, next season. I've got I've got some other things I want to do with wines too, and we'll we'll, we'll go through that. But um, let me check, double check the uh, check Facebook and see if we're still there. Uh, Ed says. Uh, Decanted next time. You know what? I think I probably should, Ed. I, I really, I think this was a wine that I really needed to can. And to be honest, I think if I remember correctly, now that I think of it, because I wasn't thinking about it before, I was thinking about it, let's open the wine, and start the show. Um, now that I think of it, I think they did mention that to me at wine store. When I was at wine store, they said, okay, this is kind of bold wine. It's going to need a. You're going to need to open this up a little bit. And then they said it's a very good wine. But uh, but it w I think the suggestion was there that it kind of needed to be decanted. So I think you're right. I probably should have decanted it first, and I did not do that. Um, but uh, <clears throat> we did decant one wine. Uh, it was, I think it was a French wine sometime back, and I have a beautiful decanter that's actually part of this set. I have a beautiful um, a decanter made also of Irish crystal that's part of this set of, of wine glasses, and I have not used it enough. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to try to use it some more, use it more uh, in the next season. Anyway, I think we're coming up to the end of the show. Oh, yes, the final review on this wine. Oh, why am I stuck on that image? I'm stuck on that image. I'm sorry, folks. If you're watching, if you're listening to the podcast later, it doesn't matter, but I've been stuck on this image for so long. I'm sorry, folks. I didn't mean to do that. All right. See, I, I the last show, and I thought it was going to be perfect, and it wasn't perfect. It, I, I made all these switching errors. Uh, I need a producer. I need a producer, don't I, <laughs> to do this for me? Uh, yeah, it's 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 tough to do by yourself. Anyway, so this is the wine we'll be drinking: the Verbo, uh, the um, Alianico, and I'm not going to put it back up because I had it up there for so long. Uh, Alianico del Voltura. And this is an Italian wine from Italy. It has a dock stamp on it. 
So we know it's from Italy. And uh, it's actually the final review on this. It's opened up a bit. I can smell and taste the blackberry more in this than I could at the very beginning, although I, that was basically all I got. More blackberry, but there are some other flavors that are coming up. I'm, I'm tasting a little bit of chocolate in here. I'm thinking that I mentioned that at the beginning, but it's becoming a little bit more pronounced. It is a little on the leathery side, but it's also, um, as it's opened up, it's the finish has become a little longer, and um, I think that it is uh, more matured now than I thought it was at first. So uh, I, I like it. I, it's it's not a bad wine, but it definitely needs to be decanted first. I'm pretty sure it needs to be decanted. But I actually do like the, the wine as I as it's been open for a while and as I've had a chance to to just uh, sip it for a while. I still think it went pretty well with. Uh, it went pretty well with the the uh, beef uh, the sausage the smoked sausage and the uh, uh, the, this is the smoked uh, barbecue uh, beef brisket didn't go so well I didn't like it so much with the 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 summer sausage this little thin summer sausage thing it looks more like a slim jim maybe it is one I don't know um, the cheeses it went pretty well with all the cheeses actually I, I like to and of course the Trader Joe's creamy gouda very good and it went very well. Very, very well with this cake, which I'm probably going to finish as soon as this wine show is over. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I got tonight. Remember, a uh, reminder that we're going to be off in the next two weeks. We'll be back on we'll be back on the 20th of March, March 20th. That's the plan. Be back on March 20th, 2021 with all new episodes and uh, maybe a whole new experience for the live stream. We'll see. Hopefully it'll be it'll be a good one. Anyway, uh, in the meantime, I want to thank everybody for sticking it out with me, for being here. I mean, it's uh, it's I've had a great time, an awesome time, as I always have with everyone here. Uh, I want to thank my good friend Ed. Ed says, did you like the Colombo episode where Donald Pleasance played a wine expert? Did they get wine stuff right on the show? Pretty much they did. Pretty much they did. Somebody did their homework on the show. It seemed pretty, pretty accurate. I've seen, yes, uh, Ed... Uh, my family and I were all big Columbo fans. We have uh, watched all the Columbos. We have a box set of most of the se- uh, well, most of the later seasons of Columbo. Couldn't get them all, but we have a box set. You know, um, Me TV plays it locally down here on Sunday nights, and then I think Antenna TV plays it kind of around the clock. Um, and uh, we're all big Abbott fans. My, my kids kind of grew up on Columbo, and. Uh, uh, Chi and I both watch it. We still watch it uh, sometimes on if it's on me TV on Sunday nights. But we have the we have the box sets and stuff, and we we watch them all. Uh, yeah, the one with Donald Pleasance uh, in it uh, was uh, was a pretty good episode, as a matter of fact. Very clever, and as a lot of the Columbus are, I have my favorites. And that's actually one of them, and a really good really good episode. With it. And if you don't know what Ed and I are talking about, check it out. Uh, Columbo, one of the greatest TV detectives of all time, played by Peter Falk, who was also the grandfather on, wait for it, Princess Bride. Yes. And he did a lot of other stuff. He did, I think he did a movie with Alan Arkin and, 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 and some other stuff. He was, uh, was he in Murder by Death? He might have been. I don't remember. Um, or Clue. No, it was in it was one of those whodunits. Uh, pretty much a parody of himself, I think. Uh, he was in one of those. Anyway, so uh, I'm going along again. That's what I do. That's what the shows, the stream of consciousness show is about, right? So uh, anyway, I want to thank you for being here tonight. I want to thank my good friend Ed Anthony as always. Thanks for being here on the show. My lovely wife Chi, thanks for setting me straight on the cheese, which uh, actually was a. Uh, uh, now I forgot it again. <laughs> Toscano, Toscano with Syrah, with Syrah wine in it. Uh, everyone else who has joined me, who's been lurking around, not in the chat, but looking, uh, lurking around, uh, and Stephanie, and Stephanie and uh, Frank, if you're uh, you're still watching, uh, thanks for for uh, dropping in as well. And on Twitch, let me get Facebook. Uh, excuse me, YouTube first. Nathan, Nathan on Facebook. Uh, yeah, you love Princess Bride. He loves Princess Bride. Nathan does. You do. And uh, so do I. I think everybody loves Princess Bride, right? It's an awesome, awesome movie. Um, thank you, Nathan, for, for being here. And thank you for uh, moving o on over to YouTube when you couldn't see it on Twitch. 
Uh, I want to thank, oh, wow, everybody who joined me in the chat tonight. Can I thank everybody? I don't know if I can uh, catch everybody. I hope if I miss anyone, forgive me, please. Uh, Barnstar, as always, thank you for being here, my friend, and a Square Guy. Check out his his channel, his Twitch channel at Square Guy. Uh, Red G, man, thank you for being here. It's been a while. Thank you for, I, I, I do appreciate it. It's always good to see you. Uh, and who else did I miss here? I don't want to miss anybody. I don't want to miss, and going, scrolling through the chat, I, I, uh, I know I'm going to miss somebody. And if I missed you, I'm sorry. Uh, Tommy Antio, of course, and uh, there's somebody else in here that I missed. Who was it? Um, I'm going to miss somebody here. That's, that's Okay. But uh, look, if I missed you, I'm sorry. I, I want to try to catch everybody here in the chat. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here with me tonight. Um, I do appreciate it. I do appreciate your time, taking the time out of your Saturday night to, to just hang out with me. And, and we can hang out together. Uh, I want to say that uh, I'm going to miss you in the next two weeks. I'm going to miss doing this because I love the show, and I'm going to miss you guys here in the next two weeks. But I'll be around, and you can also contact me, rick at civilianmedia.com, rick at civilianmedia.com, uh, and we can chat that way. Uh, we can also chat on Twitch and Facebook and YouTube and all those other places. Please, please, this is very important, please do not drink and drive. Uh, if you're not at home, please... Uh, Please take an Uber, Lyft, cab somewhere. Take a, get a friend to, to help drive you home. Drink in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your hotel room. Just don't drink and drive, please. It's very important. Don't text and drive because that's not a good thing either. Because I want you to have a great week. But most of all, I want you to have a safe week. And I really mean that. I know I say that every week, but I really mean that. I want you to have a safe week. And a safe next two or three weeks. So you can join me here back on the 20th, March 20th, 2021, for the Saturday Night Wine Stream, and we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.